We're live. Microphone check. Microphone check. I have yet another headset I'm trying. Oh my god. This could be the end of an epic story arc. The likes of which we haven't seen since the penning of the Lord of the Rings series. If you think about it. In terms of epic stories of our lifetimes, sounds good? Heck yeah. You guys always say it sounds good, so... I think you're too nice. Loud equals good. Five by five. Yeah, so... I think I was I was playing some of the videos uh, looking at the different uh, headset options, and I tried that super expensive Sennheiser one. It was all right. It was pretty nice, but the, the ear cups felt really bad. There's noise. Oh, is there noise? Wait, wait. Is something wrong? And now I'm using the... Now I got that... I got that Bayer Dynamic one. It's basically the DT770s, but with a mic on them. Sweetwater, like, ordered it directly from Bayer Dynamic. I guess is how it works. Oh, it sounds good. Oh, okay. There is noise. Like, in a good way. Okay, cool. Got paranoid for a second. Anyway, we're back in ASMR. <laughs> That's for the Patreon, the non-existent Patreon. I don't know, how do I get back in this thing? I've been trying to get the left-hand engine on this started for at least 10 minutes. I got the right-hand engine started. This is a Technum P 2006 analog. What's up, Tom? Hey, Runman. Hey, Greg. All fine. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, dudes. And uh, as usual, let's start with a coffee update. I have, uh, I've changed it up and I'm drinking a cold brew. Just a simple cold brew with a splash of oat milk. Apparently one half inch is the normal amount. It says oat milk, half an inch, but it's delicious. Super cold and uh, I'm ready to enjoy the flavor of it right now. <laughs> Mike lives for the coffee updates. Yeah, sorry I wasn't around on Thursday. I had a work obligation, and I'll also be missing Tuesday's stream because of work stuff. But, um, And then I'll be missing Saturday's stream because I have a wedding. So a lot of stuff going on uh, this like week and a half long period. But, you know, if I have a chance to do it one of the nights, like um, Wednesday, maybe I'll do it Wednesday, Thursday, or something like that. And then I'll be gone Friday, Saturday. Try to make it up to you guys. Um, so I got the right-hand engine started here, which was fine. Fuel pressure went up, and now I have fuel pressure on the left engine. And no matter how much I hit the left-hand starter, it just doesn't start. I've tried, like, giving it a little... Oh, you know what I would need to find is the choke. There's a choke control somewhere. And I have a feeling that if I use that, maybe that will coerce it to start. There's somewhere there's a some some kind of choke. Is this it down here? What is this? Oh, that is the choke. Oh, there we go. Let's try this. Nice. Okay, choke. The only the only reference I have for choke is when I was a kid and used the lawnmower and we couldn't get it started, you would use the choke. Yeah, I just do it just doesn't want to start. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Anyway, I'm just going to uh, fix this situation by just going and doing one of the presets down here. Oh, wait, there's no... Wait, there's only ready to start and cold and dark. Uh-oh. All right, let's try control E. Oh, yeah, choke on a motorcycle. Yeah, my first motorcycle had a choke on it. It was like on the thumb... Uh, I think it was on the left handle near the thumb. You would push uh, push it up with your thumb to get the choke on. But my, my second motorcycle, which was a Yamaha, I had an R6. I know, crotch rockets are kind of... Once you get older, crotch rockets are pretty cringy, but I really enjoyed that bike. I didn't ride it like a jerk or anything. I was, I was very cautious and kind of slow on it, but I just loved the way it looked. 
a saw toy with a choke. Give it more throttle. Okay, yeah, it looks like the auto start also didn't work. I've tried like pumping the throttle. Yeah, and it just doesn't like me. And Chase, I saw Chase said it's his first time in the 2006. This plane is awesome. Like I, I have a good time with this one. Um, I noticed the walk around is actually more involved than I thought it was. So if you go down to the camera presets and walk around, when you point at things, oh, it's wobbling because we only have the one engine going. You point at the tires to see tire, tire condition. And if you click on them, you can hear it uh, like kick the tires, like literally. I swear it was louder earlier. Oh, this tire condition is getting messed up because of the only having one engine on. Yeah, if you go around, you can like click the ailerons. You can click and refill the oil up top. You can push the props by hand. There's a bunch of stuff like that. Um, is this the problem I had? I think this is the problem I had with this last time where I couldn't get it started. And I think I ended up like restarting and jumping on the runway or something. Like auto started. I'm giving it a lot of throttle. Yeah, fuel pump's on. Both the ignitions are on for left-hand engine. The fuel is on right here. The fuel tanks are full. And it will just never start. And I have this left-hand overvolt warning, and I don't know how to get rid of it. Oh, yeah, let's try the GPU. That's a good idea. Yeah, maybe I fried the battery or something. It just it just hates me. It's it's spinning the prop too, like as the starter's running. And it just doesn't Oh Oh, I had to give it a lot of throttle. Yes. Brilliant. I think that might have done it. Wait, how did these all turn off? Oh, these turned off because of the uh, the quick start as well. Okay, let's get the fuel pumps back off. All the ignitions are on. Brilliant. Good call, Galaxian. Yeah, I think maybe I messed up the battery. Right, I'm not going to do the whole checklist. We're just, we're just flying for fun, you know? Check my lights here. Taxi light. Engines are very hard to start in the sim. Oh, and in real life. Man, it feels like it. Pedo heat's off. It's 20 degrees Celsius out, so we're going to leave the pedo heat off. What's up, Jeep? All right, music on. All right, so today I've got the uh, World Tours website, of course. My my crutch for finding us flights to do together. We're at the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. The Western Sahara and Morocco. I had to look it on a map. I don't. I didn't know what I was talking about. I was like, where am I? Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different airports here. And I think uh, last time, one of you guys, or a couple of you guys maybe said, like, island hopping would be fun. So... This should be pretty cool. We're a little, I'm on a little slower plane than it recommended. It did recommend like a TBM style, but I like to go a little slower usually. Uh, but yeah, all this is set up. If you want to download the flight plan, it's in the uh, video description as always. This is another one by the username Colonel Clink. And I was actually looking over here on the charts and it says uh, to take off on runway 36, unless the winds are greater than 10 knots. And I think they're lower than 10 knots. Six knot, six knot wind. All right, let's get the, get the parking brake off. Pedo heat's just gonna yell at us the whole time. It's way too hot for pedo heat. Uploading your video. Uh, Colonel Clink flies with Gripper Sim. Whoever Colonel Clink is, uh, he makes a ton of the flights on the World Tour website. I've used a bunch of them. I feel like most of the time I end up finding one of his.
All right, let's find runway three six. Oh, your discovery flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, how did it go? Did he do the go around so you could jump out and do a barrel roll? Wasn't that the plan? Was uh, you told him you wanted to do him, him to do a low pass the first time, touch and go, so you could escape? <laughs> hey, Andy. Hey, hey, S Ness. SNES. Well, it must have gone well. You're here, right? <laughs> uh, Tom says, I several times at the Canary Islands for holiday. Oh, nice. I have not been anywhere in that part of the world. I've been in Europe before, but not, uh, not in Africa. I think I have real-time weather and real-time time both turned on. I do. Looks pretty, pretty clear. Winds are pretty low, too. All right, flaps to takeoff position. Oh, you're from Germany, Tom? Four-hour flight. Nice. Is that a is that like a normal vacation spot for people? People in Europe. We're just off roading. This is fine. Oh, Colonel Clink partners with Gripperson every Sunday on YouTube. Oh, nice. Is that where all those flight plans come from? I love how the, oh, I guess that's why the, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. The lighting system is here on the displaced threshold. I think we should be able to taxi on, on this space here, but just not take off using it or land on it, of course. Oh, yeah, it's been at it a few years. Nice. I feel like I'm just like uh, hijacking all of his work, <laughs> using all of his flight plans. Hey, they're public. It's okay, right? Oh, you fly with them when you can. Nice. All right, we're going to take off and do a 180. We're going to head south. And I'm going to... Uh, let's look at the first airport first. I want to see how far away it is. Okay, it's 48 miles away, so we got a little bit of time to plan for our... Plan for our landing there. Runways 1, 6, and 3, 4. And winds are ten, a zero one zero at four knots, so maybe three four will be better. It's good. We'll be heading south anyway. Or sorry, that'd be one six. So, well, we'll maybe we'll have to turn around for that one. We'll see how it is when we get there. All right, to the south we go. All right, back in the Technum. Seventy. Forget the rotation speed in this guy. It's like it's around seven, mid seventies. All right, gear up. We do have gear in all the Technums, right? Actually, I think the was the twenty twelve is fixed gear, right? But the two thousand six is retractable. Just off to our twelve o'clock. There's a Salinas Ah, uh, Janet strikes home. again. A place where salt's been harvested from the sea since well before anyone thought to write it down. It's like a spa for the ground. People who like their food a bit less bland than a British summer holiday block there. Like seagulls to a dropped ice cream. My Might have to pull the, uh, pull the time back a little bit. Directly from the salt All right, flaps up. Ended up looking like a snowman in summer. Quite the spectacle. What's up, Loki? Which plane? It's one of the Technum planes. So I think I have four of them in the hangar now. They're by Flight Sim Studios, I think is the name of the developer. Uh, they're the they're the guys that make the um, the 2012 Traveler. 
Um, but they had the, I, I waited a while for the 2012 Traveler and they, they had this P2006 Tango in the marketplace called the Mark II and it was the digital version. But when they put the 2012 Traveler on the marketplace like last month or so, um, I finally picked it up. And in addition to that, they released this variant of the 2006. So they made an analog version of the, the same plane they already had. So the, the 2006 digital version called the Mark II has the G1000 in it, I believe. And then this is your analog equivalent. So you can put in the, you know, the 530, the 430 or the 750. So I have the 750 in it, of course. Which do I prefer? I, I don't know if I've flown either one enough to know. I think the 2006 has the walk around features working and failures and the 2012 does not yet. Though I heard that, I think one of you guys told me that they're planning on adding that stuff to the 2012 version. So um, for now, I think the 2006 has a bit more features to it. I also forget what the interior of the 2012 looks like, um, but I'm not sure if it's an analog or if it's a G G1000. I think it's a G1000 in the 2012. So if you want the analog style, then you kind of have to go with the 2006. Not good enough for failures on planes? No, me neither. Yeah, I barely started turning failures on in the M500 just because I've flown that a bunch. We're going to probably have to update the time here, but it's an awesome time to depart. Looks like a bird or a dolphin. Yeah, the super long nose on it. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it, it does remind me of, yeah, like a, like a dolphin or something, the shape of it. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, the, the 2006 has retractable landing gear, um, but the 2012, I believe, is fixed. And they're both pretty slow. Like this thing, I'm only going 100 knots right now, climbing at about 500 feet per minute. But yeah, you can see the indicated airspeed in the green arc tops out about 135. So yeah, they're not, not super fast. Cessna 152, yeah. The 152 is great. Like, um, I just like having an autopilot as an option. So the 152 does not have an autopilot. <laughs> Wonder if it's a good place for private use. Great for tourism. Yeah, the, I think the difference is the 2006 is a four seater and the 2012, is the 2012 like an eight seater? I think it's eight or 10. It's kind of comparable to the Grand Caravan. Might even be slower than the Grand Caravan. Yeah, maybe I should have, uh, maybe I'll end up switching to a faster plane, but <laughs> this is maybe a little too slow. It feels like I'm running on one engine, but both the engines are on with, I see the RPMs, our flaps are up, our gear is up. And we're only hitting like 115 knots or so. The cruise for this was listed as, uh, it was listed as like 145, 150. I see you Turk. What's up Darren, how's it going? Uh, Jeep says I had my first failure on the Cessna 310R. Pop my flap circuit. Oh, I thought something was wrong with the plane. Happened in the dark. Oh yeah, were you like clicking around in other windows or something? I have that happen every now and then where I'll use my mouse and I'll go to like click another app on my other monitor or I'll alt tab and it'll catch a click that I wasn't intending and just, yeah, click a circuit breaker by accident. Always fun. Oh, Galaxian says, or Galaxian, sorry, I keep saying Galaxian. 
Sounds like a video game. Uh, 2012 is designed specifically designed. Oh, specifically designed for Cape Air to replace the Cessna 414 routes. So there was a Cessna 414. Is that the? Oh wait, we've flown that one before, haven't we? That's a Chancellor, right? Yeah, Cessna 414 Chancellor. So the 2012s were made to replace those. Very cool. Oh, you thought it was a bug or something? Yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't. I don't always think to check the circuit breakers because you know, mattering what plane you're in, it's hit or miss. Like this plane has all of them modeled, um, which is awesome. But yeah, I don't. I don't have that in my like muscle memory. If something goes wrong, to like check circuit breakers. What island sequence? It looks like we're going to the south first and then to the east. I don't know the names of all of the islands or anything like that. I'm a bad tour guide, but... Yeah, it looks like we're going down to the south first and then to the east. This is the route. I might have to change to another plane though, just because this, this one is uh, slower than I thought it would be. Yeah, the 310R, anything can fail. I love it. I think the 310R is one of the few I have that also has like dirt and grime that builds up on the airframe. The Vulcan de San Antonio. It's a bit like a massive temple on the Earth's face, but instead of pus, it's filled with lava. Discovered by humans when the first person accidentally stepped on it, thinking it was just a hill. It's been a tourist hotspot ever since. People who enjoy walking around with helmets and poking sticks into the ground love this place. My friend Toby, he once tried to roast marshmallows over a vent there, and well, let's just say his eyebrows grew back. Eventually. That Toby. I forgot this has headphone simulation. That's kind of nice, actually. Vertigo inbound. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like, what's she calling out a volcano? Yeah, she said it's like a pimple on the planet, but it's, it's filled with lava. I am maxed out on the throttles here. And I assume that, let's see, is this going to kill my engine? Oh, the chokes are on and maybe that's why. Oh, the chokes are both on by default. Okay. Or, or they were maybe on. I'm getting some more speed now. Yeah. My RPM just went up from like, went up like a hundred or 150 or so on each side. I think that's what it was. The chokes were on for me hitting control E and it trying to auto start the engines. So maybe we'll get a, a little more speed out of it now. Unplug the GPU. Yeah, believe it or not, I did. Yeah, that's a mistake I only make on the Meridian, I guess. <laughs> uh, paper airplane on the dash by a wi the windshield in this plane. Or are you in the 2012? Still a slow aircraft. Yeah, this thing is slow. Yeah, I might, I might need to switch so we can more realistically finish this route today. Yeah, I'm definitely being very mean to this plane. I was holding the starter button for like a good 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, on the 310R. Yeah, I love when they have little ornaments on some of them you can turn on. What is the one that has a little, like a little bobblehead? Is that the ch is that the 414 that has a little bobblehead on it? Some of them have those things. It's really it's really fun. I like those. I did try the uh, Bronco yesterday a little bit, and it has like a little, like, uh, like the logo of the development team, like on a little 3D thing that sticks on the dash here, and uh, just bobbles around while you're flying it. 
Yeah, Einstein. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, Einstein. Einstein's in the 310R. Dude, it has all the fun stuff. I did I did pull out the 310R like sometime last week off stream too to check it out again after we talked about it. I know I'm just I know when the Dukes come out, I'm gonna spend a bit of time in the Dukes. And then if the wear and tear doesn't make me happy in those, I'll just end up in the Meridian again. I just love the Meridian. I, I'm like slightly committed to flying it and learning it. I've been watching real world videos on YouTube of pilots flying it and talking about it and yeah, it's just, I just really, really like that plane. Thanks for always being around when I'm playing horror games <laughs> with your calming voice. I can't be scared. Are you playing a horror game right now? <laughs> what are you playing? I never play horror games. I think the most I've played is like, I, I played Phasmophobia a bit with my sister and uh, she's super into it. And I was just not, it just, I don't know, it's a little too much. Uh, a friend of mine played it in VR and he was like, he was like 10 minutes and he's like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I have to be done, I have to be done. <laughs> oh, Sons of the Forest, oh nice. I only played the first forest and I loved it. I, re I really liked the forest. I didn't play that, I haven't played the second one though. Um, I just picked up Outer Wilds and played a couple hours last night. Uh, it's supposed to be like a really, really unique and fun game, like single player game. It's on sale right now. It was like 40% off on Steam. So um, yeah, I just started Outer Wilds and heard a lot of great things about it. It's supposed to have like just a really good story. Really good. Yeah, I don't really have any spoilers, so <laughs> please no spoils. Played Silent Hill and gave it back. <laughs> Too scary for me. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah, I think a long time ago, I I tried playing like the Outlast games and it's just too much. Like being chased in a video game did not make me happy at all. So yeah, horror games, not for me. Maybe if you play one flight sim, you play flight sim, for an hour, that'll give you like five minutes of uh, credit in a horror game because you're you're mixing the cozy with the horror. Try to offset it. Oh, did they have the Dukes in uh, FSX? Yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, the just the videos. The Dukes look incredible. I mean, I'm sure you guys have watched a bunch of the videos too, but it just yeah, it looks like even higher quality than the black square planes usually are so I should probably take a look at this uh, this airport coming up here all right winds are three ten three one zero at one four right now so we might want to go to the north facing runway circle around for that. G A G C H I. Oh, I forgot I can go in and um, on this EFB, it actually puts them in tabs at the top, which I, I actually really love that. El Hero. I'm going to mispronounce everything. We get the autopilot. Okay, autopilot master is on. Nav mode, altitude hold mode. All right, now I can go check out my charts over here. So yeah, runway three four will be the preference, I guess. Maybe we can do circle and do a touch and go on three four. Tower is one one eight point one. Let's try it out on say intentions. Where am I going right now? Oh, nav mode is now off. 
What? Ready. Nav. We're on GPS mode. I had this problem last time, right? Yeah, I think I had this problem last time where I couldn't use the autopilot. AP Master is on. Okay, now I can use heading mode. Huh? Let's try to get back on course. Okay, now it's working again. And altitude hold mode. All right, just a little, uh, little S turn here for fun. You like shooting horror games, zombies, Starship Trooper. Oh yeah, yeah like like Hell Divers. Is that is that considered horror? Uh, it turned off again, didn't it? Look at this bank that it's doing right now. Whoa. This is an aggressive autopilot. Okay, it's intercepting nav mode. It looks like. Off to our eleven o'clock. Intercepting the course, kilometers. maybe. Heading one nine or three. You'll find the Cueva Subternia Almar. It's a cave that goes under the sea, which is quite remarkable because most caves don't bother. They just sit there being all cavey. Altitude hold mode doesn't appear to be doing a great job either. Our, our VSI is going kind of nuts. Where people go to feel more underground than usual. My friend Toby once went there, and he said it Look was at, like what is going on? Oh, the autopilot's run, off now. All right, I don't think I can trust the autopilot enjoy. in this. But then Toby is a man who once tried to use a starfish as a frisbee. So make of that what you will. All right, let's see how the lights look in this guy. Oh, that's it. The whole panel lit up. Oh, is this an on-off button? Huh, I don't know. I, I started turning this dial. Oh, this is for the uh, for the buttons down here. Uh, where are the rest of our lights? Oh, here we go. Oh, there's the panel. Ah, nice. Yes, there we go. I was hoping it actually had like the backlighting and not just in the front like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like this autopilot is pretty unreliable right now. Tour guide exposing their friends. Yeah, all Janet does is talk about Toby. She's pretty funny though. The two professional ones can get a little long-winded, but then again, Janet gives us a story about Toby every single time. All right, yeah, this, this autopilot's a bit crazy. It's gonna turn off the AP master for now. Sons of the Forest. Oh, couldn't be streamed? What do you mean? Why not? Is there some controversy? Super gory? Huh, that's surprising. I'm pretty sure people streamed the first game. It's pretty rare that um, that a stream isn't allowed to be, uh, or a game isn't allowed to be streamed. Uh, which mod? It's part of Say Intentions. It's the tour guide feature. All right, let me go to 118.3. See if we can get the tower up. El Hero, I guess? Is that pronounced Hero? Let's all find out. And how far out are we? We're like eight miles to the north. And oh, I need to update my call sign. That's something I really wish could be a feature of say intentions like you have an area you set your call sign um it's pretty fast to update it but if you don't like it always follows the call sign you have set there and i had i so i have to go in and change it from like meridian to technum it's yarrow el yarrow i'll just say tower <laughs> Tower, Technum, 6063 Echo, six miles to the north, request touch and go. Just want to see if it'll give us something. I'm sure it will. I right, bring the power back a bit. Did I do the right frequency? Trip 1183? Oh, 1181. Let's try Yarrow. Yarrow Tower, Technum, 6063 Echo, five miles to the northeast request, touch and go. 
What's the name of the song in the background? The one right now? This one? Uh, this one is... Oh man, I'm not going to be able to pronounce it. Echo Hierro Tower. After departure, fly runway heading until reaching five five zero zero. Then proceed on course. Runway Wind heading. What the heck? One, two, runway Here, I'll put a link to it, Mike. I can't. I can't pronounce the name of it. The name of the artist. So I'll just throw a link in. So I, I asked them for a, uh, a touch and go, and they gave us like departure instructions. Yeah, it said after departure. Fly runway heading. Oh, it, it thinks that I said request departure. We're requesting a touch and go, 6 3 Echo. Alright, let's try to do a touch and go on runway 30. Technum 6 3 Echo, runway 3 4, cleared for touch and go. After the option, make left three, circuit. Four. Report midfield each time. Win 3 2 1 at 7. Nice, it is. All right, runway three four clear for touch and go. Technum six three echo. It is runway three four. I don't know why I was thinking it was three zero. All right, three four. And runway is three three eight on the heading. Three three eight. Oh, interesting. I put in OBS mode and then the CDI here changed and removed the vertical line, actually. That's uh, not very helpful. <laughs> Shouldn't it remove the... It should remove the other line, right? Like, I need, I need to line up. Getting some stutters. Oh, nice lake pilots in the Bronco. I flew the Bronco around a little bit yesterday. It's definitely not my cup of tea, but it's such a cool looking plane. The visibility in that thing is great too. And you can get, even though it's on the marketplace, you can go to their website and you can download the weapons packages. So this is, I don't know how many other planes have done this, but you can actually, um, like, normally, if you get something on the marketplace, you can't get... Yeah, that's the OV-10 that just came out on uh, yesterday, I think. On Friday, actually. Piper 57, Papa, runway 32, clear to land. And, um... Is it a white Bronco? <laughs> Too soon? Steam cages are cooler than Garmin. I mean, we got a Garmin right here, though. If I flew in real life, there is no way I would prefer steam gauges over like a G1000 and the technology and all the redundancy in that thing and like the auto gyro drift and it seems so much safer. But I understand that most of the time, like most, most planes in the world in real life, to my knowledge, do have a configuration like this, right? They're steam gauge and they have, you know, some sort of Garmin unit or... Avidyne avionics in it to back it up, and then you got your, uh, you know, you got your iPad on the side with four flight. Off to our three o'clock. They definitely Six have more character away. though, like. Heading 238 is the east west. Day El Hierro. It's like a big rock. In El Hierro. But not just any rock. It's one of the smallest Canary Islands discovered by the Bimbak people, who probably thought it was quite a find until they realized it was surrounded by water. It's famous for its cheese wine. My friend Toby once tried to swim around it, but only got as far as realizing he couldn't swim. Quite the day that was. <laughs> okay. Okay, Janet. Is there a Marketplace video? No, I didn't do a stream because I was busy on Thursday night, so yeah, I had to skip it this week. Um, it was just, I, I did take a look though, and it looks like it was mainly the Bronco. The Bronco is the big release, and the military stuff's not really my thing anyway. So I, I wouldn't do it very, uh, I wouldn't do it justice by trying it out. But I did, I did try it out last night, and uh, yeah, it seems it seems pretty nice. I I think it's cool that you can. Oh yeah, what I was saying was, um, 
most of the time something will get released like a military plane like a jet or, a, or something like this will get released and have weapon systems modeled but due to the policies of like microsoft they won't let you buy that version of the plane in the marketplace so they're always like a weapons free you know they have no weapons uh version of it um, because of like their policies or whatever but with this one you actually can download it from the marketplace and then go to the developer's website and then you can install those weapons packages so you just throw it in your community folder and it adds it in which is awesome so you can still purchase it from the marketplace if, if that's your preference and get the uh, get the weapon systems if you want them. So it's got like uh, gun system, like like rocket systems. I think it's got like missiles, one under each wing. It's got guns and then some other like cannons you can mount, like four cannons on the bottom front. It's uh, yeah, it's very heavily armed. It seems like more of a recon plane. No weapons makes sense. Yeah, maybe they added it. Maybe they just added it just to please people that want you know want visible weapons. I don't know what's going on with the. It's like that shadow right there under us. Alright, I have to fix the, uh, by fix, I mean turn back the clocks. <laughs> Who's in this Bruce Goose? Bobo, of course. We're just doing a touch and go, guys. If you already landed, you can just take off again. I'm just gonna do a touch and go because it's our first airport. Alright, let me get OBS turned off so I can get back on the course. Oh wow, we got some winds here. And some trees. We'll let you know we're established final for 2763, Cordero Alright, I have my rudder pedals on. Should use those. Flaps up, back to takeoff position. Yeah, definitely. The sunset is beautiful, but definitely going to switch it to daytime again. Yeah, I got my pedals installed again. Beechcraft 9001 Bravo cleared to land runway 24, wind calm. To land runway 24 beach crash. Alright, Bravo. And I need to sequence this to the next airport to the east to the next island we're going to. Flight plan and GCHI looks to be the next one. Oh no, GCHI, sorry, that's where we just landed. Right after GCHI. We have um there's a RNAV waypoint on the way, Gomer. And then after Gomer, it's G C G M Golf Charlie Golf Mike is the next airport. All right, let's fix this time of day thing. Just advance to the next morning. Uh, Tom says I don't need weapons. My P-51D should be updated. Um, um, I wish I knew which plane that was uh, out of memory, but I don't. How long did it take to, to dig out your pedals from all the gadgets? It, they were near my feet or like to the side of my desk and just unplugged. I think it's like sometimes I'll do a standing. I'll stand during my stream at my standing desk. So when I do that, I, I just use my stick and my throttle. Now I'll, I'll use rudders on my stick. So what's up, Ian? Uh, flow is what you're seeing for the weather and stuff. This is flow, which is in the marketplace. Uh, same with the weather in the bottom left is from flow. It gives you like short, it gives you little extra windows like that and shortcut to things like sim raid and you can customize it all. Aircraft lights, it's, it's pretty nice. But uh, the disclaimer is if you have an Xbox Series S, it is not recommended. I think for performance reasons. And I think some people in chat have said, um, and on Discord, you know, some of you guys have said that I think it's a little wonky on an Xbox. Like it doesn't work that great. Like you would need a mouse plugged in or something, so 
probably best to use it only on PC. <laughs> Crashing soon is next to us. <laughs> nice username. Okay, let me turn that turn that noise down a little bit. Uh, how long? Do, oh yeah, sorry, I read that already. Yeah, I definitely do have uh, a ton of <laughs> a gadgets in my closet. I would sell like the G1000 sweep, but um, if my girlfriend, like when when she continues her instrument training. Um, I want to have that on hand and so does she so like I can pull it out of the closet and she can train using the G1000 if she's um, or even I have the 530 and the 430 as well from Real Sim Gear so pretty much um, if she's in any plane with Garmin Avion <laughs> now watch she's going to have like a G she'll, she'll have like a 750 or something so I'll have to buy something else but I want to have those available like for her specifically just because yeah I played around with them a while and love them but it just doesn't make sense for the stream and they take up a lot of space and it's two more monitors you're technically plugging in every time you use those. And the performance when you pop out the avionics, at least at the time I was using them, was pretty crappy. So yeah, I have a lot of a lot of reasons to not use them, but yeah, I, I think that um yeah, eventually when she when she resumes her instrument training, she'll love using those. Kip's cupboard marketplace, yeah. Two days will have enough for a 4090. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, the G1000 suite's really expensive. But yeah, I bought that I bought that several years ago when I was like first getting into all the Garmin stuff in the sim and they're really nice. I think there are alternatives now, like um real sim gear is not the only place to buy that kind of stuff. Actually, do we get visible co-pilots in this plane? Do I have a co-pilot set? I do. Let's refuel it while we're flying. Yeah, I wish... It's silly, but I just... Having a visible co-pilot... It's an important feature. AV, AV attack. I haven't seen those. Yeah, I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's stuff that's maybe as good or maybe even better than real sim gear at this point. But I've yeah, I've only used the real sim gear stuff. I think it's really good. I just I wish that the performance was better when you hit you know did the right alt click like this when you click it and it pops it out into its own window. Um, this isn't a floating window right now. How it's showing it on the stream, but. Yeah, I wish the performance... Like, I haven't tried it since I had a... I think I had a 3080, so I've upgraded since then and stuff, but maybe it, maybe it's way better now. But yeah, now it's a desk space thing. Keep it really minimal. I wonder how much this plane can hold. What's our payload? 756 pounds. Pretty sure that the, uh, well, th this is smaller than the Grand Caravan. Four seater with some cargo space in the back. Yeah, this plane, this plane is cool. I'm just, um, the only thing I had trouble with was starting the engine at the left engine. It was probably user error. All right, GCGM, so Golf Charlie, Golf Mike. We're pretty much headed straight for it. That's our next next air, airport here. We're gonna do a, we'll do another touch and go just cause it's early in the stream. And then maybe the, uh, maybe the third one we'll do a full stop. So yeah, I really, really love how they integrated the charts over here. So I can put in GCGM by adding a new tab. Tower, turn left, next taxiway, contact ground point seven five, went off. Whoops, I just hit the gear twice because I was typing G, but I didn't click in the field yet. Make sure that's up. <laughs> Oops. Maybe I'll try the autopilot again. I just clicked the master switch. Good thing I had the button, uh, the switch on my, my physical master switch turned on. Okay, nav, let's try this again. 
altitude hold. Look at the banks that it does. It's noticing our attitude indicator isn't working either. Is this like blocked or something? Maybe because I didn't cage it on the ground, it's just, it doesn't work. You know what it might be? It might be that I don't have the package for this plane from the PMS-50 site. Because it's definitely being very squirrely. Hey, underdog, what's up? Yeah, this thing is just... <laughs> All right. All right, you've had your fun. Autopilot is off again. Whoa, yikes. Dude. Oh my god, runaway trim. Runaway trim. The trim just went to 100% nose up when I turned the autopilot off. Yikes. Not good. The vomit comet, yeah. Is there a way to prevent steering the plane when typing in virtual input fields? How does it steer the plane? Are there default are there defaults for um, le hitting letters that type in uh, that that are bound to like control surfaces? I would just uh, unbind whatever alpha numeric keys you have set to your flight control surfaces. Like, do you fly with a keyboard? Which plane? This is the Technum P2006, the analog version. Input is going through and steers controls. Oh, wow. I don't know the answer to that other than unbind them from your control surfaces. But if you fly using a keyboard, then I guess that's not an option. So, I mean, if you're using a Garmin to input things, then you just use the FMS knob, do it the old school way or the way that you would do it in real life. Unless you have like a keyboard pad, which most of the time you don't. Just use the uh, input it letter by letter. Hang on, me. I got golf mic over here. All right, we got runway two seven and zero nine at Logurma. Logurma. Let's try the try the tower again. Eighteen three seventy five. Let's try that again. There we go. And we're about, okay, we're 12 miles. Oh, this is from uh, Gomer. So from here, 19 miles out still. Let's check the weather over there. Any wind data, winds calm. All right, so we'll just do runway zero nine. That's convenient for us for another touch and go. Zero nine. 5,000 foot runway. I don't know why I always fly so high. It's a safety thing, I you know, I guess. Mojo sauce? Sounds delicious. Yeah, I've never been to the Canary Islands before. You can use virtual keyboards and the keys land in the input field and fire events in the cockpit. Oh, you fly with the alpha. It's probably very plane by plane to mattering if hitting those keys um, also triggers those button presses like outside of the EFB or the working or like the working title garments or something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't run into that because I don't have I don't have any of my keyboard. Actually, no, I do. Like, like I just hit G by accident because I wasn't in the field and I typed G and that did not trigger the gear going down again. So. Like for this EFB, it was working for me. I just had to make sure to actually click the field. <laughs> Darren says, 
Mimes terrify me. They're always doing unspeakable things. Nice. <laughs> Pun of the day. Is this a new ritual? I like it. Fly low over Lanzarote. Lanzarotes. I'm so bad at <laughs> I can't. I can't. If it's not English, even if it is English, I can't pronounce it. Uh, Mark's asking for tips on landing the Beechcraft. D18. Is that the model 18? Oh, the last island. Okay. Puns only allowed during the cruise phase. Yeah, just in case somebody cracks up too much, you don't want to endanger the flight. That seems like a good policy for sure. <laughs> Alright, La Gomera? La Gomera, maybe? I'm going to turn off Janet for now. Sorry, Janet. We got real ATC to do here. Mispronouncing tower names. La Gomera? Gomera. I got to practice. How now, brown cow? La Gomera Tower. Technum 6063 Echo. Eight miles to the west. Request touch and go. All right, we'll do another touch and go, and then the next airport after this, we'll do a full stop. Technum 6063 Echo Lagomera. Info runway 27, cleared for touch and go. After the option, make left hand. Report downwind. 27. Wind 303 at 10 zero QNH 1013. Uh, it is way better for that, that runway. Can we get runway niner instead? 63 echo. 086 on the heading. This is gonna be with a tailwind, but I don't wanna slow down our progress, so we don't have to Second circle. Six three echo runway zero niner cleared for touch and go. After the option make right hand. Report downwind each time. Alright, runway zero niner cleared for touch and go, and then right hand. Six three echo. All right, right hand turn after touch and go. Where is the airport? Oh, I think I see it. Oh, there it is right there. Can barely see it with the sun in my face. It's right here. It's like, uh, it looks like you guys are all lined up already. All right, another touch and go with a tailwind. I can't wait till you reach Fuerteventura. That one doesn't look as hard. Is it Fuerteventura? I mean, Ventura in California, I know, so I've said Ventura before. But yeah, I, I cannot pronounce most most non-English words, that's for sure. If it was in German, I, I, I took some German in high school. Maybe that would be okay. What's up, Mark? Mark says I'm going to have to join in one of these as soon as I get a bit better at landing. There's no pressure uh, to have incredible landings or anything. I mean, you see mine. Most of the time, I'm off center line and landing at 500 feet per minute. No pressure at all. And if you if you can't do the landing and you mess it up, just like I turn tr crash damage off. Like I always have crash damage off because if you crash, you don't want to go to the black screen. You just want to hit Y on your keyboard, go into slew mode, and then prop yourself back up and then take off again. No big deal. I mean, it's more just about flying to the same areas together in a big group. That's what's fun about it. See different parts of the world, you know, in the sim and um, getting a good landing is just a bonus. That's what I keep telling myself at least. And mattering which plane you're using, you could take advantage of all the autopilot things. Like, obviously, like I'm a huge G1000 like technology enjoyer. So, yeah, set up a visual approach and use autopilot to bring you right down towards the runway every time, so you're all lined up. It'll really help with uh, just taking the stress away from doing a landing. I also switch planes so often too, and a, a lot of these guys switch planes a lot too. So it's not like um, you know, none of us are 
Or it's pretty rare to feel like super comfortable in any plane, at least for me, because I'm like switching all the time. Like even uh, flying the Meridian as much as I have been, I feel like I'm not great at landing it. Really kind of have to drive that thing into the ground like the vision jet. All right, we have a tailwind on this one, so it's not the, uh, it's not going to be the smoothest. Oh, it's pretty low. Oh, it's only three knots now. That's from the left now. Nice. It got better. This is what a, a windless landing looks like. Quite a bit better. Always pulling us to the left, of course. All right, flaps back to takeoff position. Let's see if I can get back onto the center line. There we go. Gear up. Give me control of my drone camera. I always have this issue with my drone camera. Is it stolen my... I wanted to watch you guys do your touch and goes and I can't... I can't move my drone camera. Why? Yeah, my arrow keys don't work. None of my drone controls work. Alright. I feel like I've run into this bug, like... Recently, and I, I just can't... Yeah, just my, my arrow keys just stop working. So weird. Press Y. <laughs> uh, are my six pack instruments frozen? No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, for some reason, this is my external camera, the normal third person view, basically. And then my drone camera, and I can't move using all my normal controls. They just don't work. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that happens every now and then. All right, we're going to continue east here. While in drone, mo drone mode, pressing Y goes into a different mode. Oh, no, that's just slew mode. <laughs> yeah. Y just puts me in slew. All right, on to the east. Tower, we're exiting your airspace now. Thanks for the touch and go. Six re echo. We're leaving your airport. Let's see if we get that super deep voice guy again. Technic 6 3 Echo nice. acknowledged. Safe flight. Safe flight. This plane, I'll say, is very, very stable, though. Like, I feel like once I get it trimmed out, it's just like very. I hardly have to touch anything. I, I probably made the same comment the last time I flew it. Try pressing C in drone mode. Oh, that was it. Whoa, what is C? Yep, that was it. Avison for the win. Yeah, that was it. I can drone around now. I'll have to look up what, what that key is bound to. Maybe unbind it. All right, next island and next airport. Looks like it has us has us going over these waypoints, but I'm not sure. Like we haven't seen. Okay, this island over here has maybe a bunch of uh, points of interest. There's there are several points of interest that were added by Microsoft in these in these locations. So hopefully we'll fly past some of them. Uh, next airport is uh, Golf Charlie Tango Sierra G C T S. Airport briefing. Oh, C is toggle plane controls. Oh, so then you're able to fly your plane while in drone, uh, while in drone mode. Nice, good to know. Thanks, underdog. Thanks, Avison. I'm just gonna keep the throttle like full on this thing. 
because I'm the, I'm the slow boy today. Arguably every day. Nice, Bobo. Wait, it says right flyer. Do I not have the right flyer installed? <laughs> Instead of the right flyer, it's showing you... Oh, wait, is that you in the right flyer, Bobo? Yeah. But it's showing you in the Hercules instead. <laughs> I'm neglecting my coffee here. Everybody with coffee? Now is the time. All right, we're going to do a full stop at this next airport here. We're over an hour into the stream already. I like having live weather on, but times like these when it's clear skies, it upsets me. It doesn't look as good. I've been checking every day to see if the to see if the um, dukes are released. Hopefully it happens on Wednesday night so I can stream it because I'll be busy Monday and Tuesday. What's up, Joe Schmo? You got fired today. Oh, no, dude. I'm sorry, man. I've been there. Well, not fired. Technically, I got I got laid off was it a year and a half ago. I have a couple of friends that are uh, still looking for still looking for gigs that have been laid off. Is it, did you get fire fired or did you get laid off? Like, at no, you know, like unemployed at, by without, like not at fault for your unemployment kind of thing. Oh, I just realized there's trim indicators over here. Our rudder and our, uh, our elevator trim. Oh, fire fired? Oh no. Did you pull uh, Jerry Maguire or something? What was the, uh, what was that movie? Oh, Half Baked, Half Baked. When the guy quits the fast food place. Jeremy, what do I do for work? I've been in tech my whole life. Just leave it broadly in tech, you know, computers, internet, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a nerd, like probably a lot of you guys. The Duke's not gonna be released until, oh, until the Sim update releases? Oh, that's on the 30th then, right? That got pushed to April 30th, I think I saw. Thanks for the info, Lancer. Yeah, I think somebody I think somebody said that before. Um, probably on a previous stream, somebody said that. I forgot. Failure to complete tasks in a timely manner? Ugh. Well, hopefully it's for the best. Like, generally when crappy things happen... Um, ideally... Obviously, it doesn't happen every time, but usually you'll go for something better than what you had before and whatever thing you lost, <laughs> you know, something that's better for you in, in some way, whether it's like your schedule or what, what job, what, what company you're working for or what, you know, if it's a relationship, look for uh, one that's better for you. <laughs> Hopefully it's a blessing in disguise, you know, but yeah, it's always stressful to lose a job. I was super stressed out when I lost mine. And uh, yeah, I stopped streaming for like eight, nine months because of it. I should have just kept streaming to like, but I was just, uh, yeah, it's kind of defeating feeling. Still having a job in text, an achievement unlocked accomplishment. Yeah, oh. <laughs> how many, with how many people are being laid off? Yeah, everybody just disappeared. Maybe they, uh, maybe they don't have anybody working on the multiplayer servers anymore. Oh, which runway for the next landing? Let's figure that out. I mean, it looks like the one, if we want to just land at what our preference is, looks like 07 is on course. Um, let's check the wind though. 
variable at two knots. So yeah, we can just land on zero seven, it looks like. That'll be fine. Runway seven heading is zero seven three. If you wanna, if you're an OBS enjoyer, put zero seven three in. Uh, not on this waypoint though, whoops. Can just set the heading bug as well. There we go. Yeah, there's it's it's kind of uh, frustrating when you see posts where companies are having record profits and record layoffs at the same time. Doesn't feel good, man. Yeah, OBS extended runway line. That's pretty much always what I use it for. It's excellent. All right, I'm gonna go direct to. Direct to and then set OBS. When I say 073, 073. And if you don't have the uh, GTN, you can set it um, here by turning your OBS dial like this if you have a regular CDI. Or if you're on the G1000, you can take the course knob, which is shaped like a triangle, and turn that one, and that'll set your course to override the course from the GPS. So you hit OBS and then turn. Yeah, basically the procedure is the same. Make sure you have the correct waypoint active that you want to set the OBS for. And then um, and then you set the course. And you're overriding the course that the GPS calculated from point to point for that point. So that gives you a long extended runway line. You can just set it to the runway number with a zero at the end if you don't know. That'll give you a vague heading for the runway. But if you have the charts, you can look up the actual runway heading. So it's 073 specifically here. So we set that on, set up, set it up for that instead. What's the dash line when activating OBS? Is that my heading bug? Oh, it's not my heading bug. And what is that dashed line? Oh, it looks like it's just a... Is that just a detail thing? Oh, that's weird. It's like an additional level of detail. When you zoom in far enough, it changes to a dashed line. Maybe it's for visibility when it's amongst all the other waypoints and stuff. I'm not sure. But if I zoom out one notch, then I don't see that anymore. All right, we're going to do a full stop this time, guys. So we can take a little break here. People can restroom and all that good stuff. Tower Technum 6063 Echo to the southwest, a couple miles, uh, six miles. Request full stop landing. <laughs> a couple miles, very specific. It's for the best. I was getting ready to put my two weeks after my planned vacation this week. Wait, you lose all your PTO? Oh my God. I'm pretty sure that's like, at least in California, that's illegal, I think. If, uh, which is why a lot of some California companies and tech companies specifically, they'll go for unlimited PTO policies, which is generally BS and just benefits the employer and not the worker. Oh, it's retail. Yeah, I'm pretty... I'm obviously not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure in California, it's a law that if you accumulate your PTO, that it has to be paid out on your final day of employment, just like your last paycheck. So they can't just steal it from you. Uh, but it does depend on the company policy. Like some of them only let you roll over a certain amount of PTO each year. Some of them you can accumulate all of it and they'll eventually tell you like that you have to take it because <laughs> they don't want to you know, pay you out like $200, 200 hours of PTO. Um, but yeah, that sucks if it forfeits your PTO. That is so shady. It should be illegal. That's some crap. Gear down. Alright, full stop this time. Stretch those rudder pedal legs. Yeah, if you have rudder pedals. Hydrate. 
use the restroom. Go watch an episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force on the couch. Those are short, right? All right, flaps uno. Really just need to bring this thing back to idle to get it slow enough. As slow as it feels, it's like I have to I have to pull back the throttle way. Oh yeah, it's always a always a good time, Darren. Yeah, on short final especially. Bring the challenge. Turn OBS mode off now. Alright, full flaps. We just uh, it, winds are calm basically. Kind of a dirty windshield. All right, we're on glide slope. I didn't. I didn't even ask them if we could land. Or I put in the wrong frequency. It says it's ground and tower on the same frequency. I wonder if it handles that correctly, actually. Right, rudder pedals. I got my legs like all kicked out way in front of me. Uh, that's not a good taxiway for us. We'll need the next one. Whiteboards are remarkable. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I wish this worked for me. I don't know why the... Maybe I should get Essentials and replace the Pro version because I never get the overhead like center line diagram and stuff that's supposed to be on that landing thing. On the landing performance. Alright, flaps up, taxi lights, strobes off. That's good enough. I didn't use fuel pumps or anything. Oscar, push back approved contact tower when ready for taxi. Push back approved full contact tower when ready. Tornado 892 Tango Oscar. These brakes are pretty weak in this thing. Holy crap, there's a lot of you guys. Amazing. I try to get over there. <laughs> Wait, that's a DC... Wait, why does that say DC3? That's not the DC3. What's going on? I have the, D I have the DC3 installed. Codifier's down. In a diamond. Alright, Bobo, what are you in right now? Are you guys landing side by side? Amazing. Cyber's in the MU2. I tried flying the MU2 again. I think I like how it looks better than I like flying it. <laughs> DC tail dragger. I don't know why it isn't showing it. All right, here comes Lolich in the vision jet. Yeah, we're going to take a break here. So if you guys want to park and grab a snack, grab a restroom break, this is the time. Oh, it might be your livery. Nicoletta Vision Jet incoming. Huh. 
Hunterson's in the wait. What's the E three hundred? Oh, is that the that's the extra, isn't it? That looks very smooth. Oh yeah, lakes in the. I love the look of the Bronco. Reminds me of, like the Beach eighteen. Oh yeah, that's the extra. <laughs> that thing is so fast. The extra is like the OG Vertigo. All right, which airport? We are at this airport, uh, GCTS Reina Sofia. Reina Sofia. We're in the Canary Islands. Oh, nice. I see the right flyer this time. I don't know why, why I was showing it as a Hercules before a <laughs> Bobo. <laughs> He's making history, everyone. Here he comes. Beautiful. <laughs> I don't know why everything just got so choppy. Look at this. Everything is just stuttering like crazy all of a sudden. There's too many of us, maybe. Yeah, look at that. I, I don't know if it comes across on the stream, but it's stuttering like every second. It just freezes. Oh, yeah, we're going to take a little break here, like three, four, five, five point two minutes, something around there. Everybody can refill their drinks, relieve themselves, whatever you need to do. I'll see you guys in a minute. Does it have cabin environmental controls? Oh, let me check. I think it does. Let me take a look. All right, we're, we're still in rest stop mode. Oh, wow. My sim was freezing. I didn't even pull off the, uh, I didn't even pull off the runway. Let me do that. Wait, did everybody disappear again? Yeah, you guys all disappeared again. What is going on? We're breaking the servers, I think. Uh, Drake says the dashed line you saw on the 750 are the runway lines. Oh, got it, got it. That makes sense. It seems like you have to zoom in a certain amount before they show up. So it makes sense they're right on, <laughs> right on board with the, uh, with what we set for OBS. Which server? USA West, Tom. Uh, just make sure that uh, there's some instructions in the video um, description, but make sure that you have all all players turned on in the flight conditions menu. So you have to be on the world map and um, on the flight conditions menu, choose all players. 
It's in the top right corner corner of the world map. Otherwise, you're only going to see people that have real time. And a lot of the time, at least me especially, I'm always changing the time of day. And I swear, there, I, I keep thinking that there's something wrong with my controls because every time I'm taxing in every single plane, it's pulling significantly to the right. Wind check four, three, two, bravo. But every time I check my controls, everything is centered. So I'm not, I'm not sure that there's anything wrong. I think it's just the ground handling. Cherokee three one five X ray Papa, proceed to holding point Alpha two via taxiway. Yeah, like here on sensitivity. I mean, it's Proceeding it's dead center on my rudder pedals. By a Bravo Cherokee three one five X ray Papa. Yeah, something is going on with it. It's just like. The sim seems very laggy right now. I don't know what's going on. Lewis, thanks for the sub. I'm um, sorry, let me check those cabin environmental controls. Yeah, everything is so choppy right now. Look at this. Just as I'm moving the camera, every couple seconds it just kind of freezes let me try the windowed mode and then full screen fix oh see everything's just choppy like he's moving he stops moving stop moving stop over and over and over again your sim got choppy too yeah tire pressure maybe yeah, this does have the tire pressure. I don't actually know how to fix the tire pressure. Frame gen, yeah, that's possible too. Frame gen usually gives like a weird choppy, um, it almost looks like a V-Sync issue when it happens. But I don't think it hurts to turn off frame gen if you're getting good, good frames. Oh yeah, I do have terrain level detail up at 200 as well. I, I normally have that down to 100, so it usually doesn't make a big difference. Yeah, it's still happening though, so you're just watching you guys move around. Chop. Maybe there's just too many of us breaking it. I'm still in the 2006, yeah. Um, let's see what we got for environmental controls in this thing. We have, uh, this might be it. We have a uh, cabin heat. Push for defrost and pull for cabin heat. Ground, 3 2 Bravo, stay altimeter. Um, and then we just have lights everywhere. Yeah, I don't think we have. And then there's lighting. Oh, here we have cabin heater down here. Here we go. Cabin heat from left or right hand engine. We can pull these on for cabin heater as well. I don't know if it gives us a um, a cabin temperature anywhere though. Yeah, this is this is so choppy. What is going on? Uh, this is just time outside air temp. We can change to Celsius or Fahrenheit or check our volts. King Air one four five kilo alpha. Continue taxi via taxiways. Bravo and Charlie hold short of runway one two. Yeah, this is this is some bad choppiness. Why is your DA42 pink? It's probably a bug with the livery. Um, I remember this back from yeah, like there, there's a pink one over here too. Some liveries like it will they'll be pink until you get close to them, and I think it's uh, something the livery developer has to fix. Because way back when I made some of the couch captain liveries, um, I had the same issue until I updated them. So they basically just need to like re-save the liveries. See, I can see you once I get closer. So yeah, it's probably it's it's probably on the developer to just fix it. Proceed to the ramp via taxiway Foxtrot monitor ground on one two one point five. Proceeding to the ramp via Foxtrot monitoring ground on one two one point five Cessna nine zero eight Charlie Echo. All right, winds are calm and we're going to be headed to the east. So I guess we can use runway seven again. Runway two one via taxiway Delta and Echo. 
I don't know. I can, this choppiness is very bad. <laughs> nice, Bobo. Bobo, did you know that they released some uh, liveries for the Ornithopter? They're in the marketplace. Yeah, I don't know what. Are, are you guys getting the same choppiness right now? Looks like something's updating in the background. Yeah, it does. I mean, nothing should be downloading while you're, while you're, uh, you know, in the sim. It's smooth there. Choppy for Chris. Yeah, it's pretty bad. You're in the P40. Yeah, if I don't own the plane and, and have it installed, it'll show a different plane. GPU temperatures. It is possible. I do have a I do have flights in limited to 60 frames though. And but because I have a messed up, I have like a half broken one fan only uh, GPU, my 4080. Um, because Nvidia sent me a one with a broken fan, maybe it is possible. <laughs> Let's see, I have G Sync on. I'm just checking if I have it limited to 60 FPS still. Yeah, I do. What server? Uh, we're on USA West. I'm just checking that I have 60. F yeah, I have a 60 FPS max frame rate. I think I'll just load in again. I'll have to modify the flight plan though. That's the only annoying part. Cause I'm, well, I need all the waypoints. Uh, so let me, let me grab a little nav map. And I'm just going to edit the flight plan. All right. And then I just need to delete a few waypoints here. We're at Rainia Sophia. All right. Re exported it. Now I can load a modified flight plan. All right, there we go. Now we're taking off from Rainier Sophia. Ramp large, good. And I'm gonna start on the runway, just, um, just to save a little time here. I guess I could change the livery. Let's go with this blue one. Runway seven, so I'll load in there and then I'll wait for you guys. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Sure is awesome having these fly-ins. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, all I do is grab something from the World Tours website, and there there are so many good ones. That dude, Curdle Clink, makes so many good flight plans, and I just uh, I just steal all of his work and take advantage of those flight plans he puts in there. I feel like nine out of ten times it's one that he's made. Yeah, appreciate you guys all showing up and flying around. It's fun. Nice change of pace, and then yeah, during the other streams, I'm usually doing like. IFR stuff with ATC and all that. It's, yeah, it's nice to explore the world though. I'm usually pretty bad at it. <laughs> so I always find the same spots over and over again. So it's nice having, having that website. I have it linked in the video description too. It's still choppy. Look at this. I think I have to restart the whole sim. This is, this is not going to fly. No pun intended. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to restart the sim. It'll take a few minutes, but um, I think it's the I think it's the right call. Uh, Joe says normally I watch the replays while I sleep. While I sleep, <laughs> glad I lost my job. No, <laughs> money is uh, unfortunately important. So, <laughs> all right, restarting the sim right now. I'm not sure. Everything was running great until we got towards this airport. It 
Stutter issue, delete rolling cash. Yeah, I have rolling cash off actually, but I have heard I have heard that as a good fix before, but I've had mine off since forever. Um, I don't know, maybe I should have it on. I never know. Like my internet's fast enough where and I have enough memory where I think it's not a problem. Yeah, 7800 X3D is what I'm running. It's the X3D chips are very, very good for any any game that is using a lot of single threaded stuff. So Microsoft Flight Sim is one of those games. Is White Castle good? I don't know if I've ever had White Castle. Can't you buy White Castle burgers for, or like uh, from the frozen section at a supermarket? I don't think I've ever been to a real White Castle. Does White Castle still exist? Um, you only use 75% CPU. <laughs> Bobo, is that a glider? Bobo was flying the right flyer. Walmart has them. <laughs> you bought some. Yeah, I don't know. I think I've had them maybe once in my life. It's been a long time. All right, I'm at the Dune expansion screen. Still booting up. White Castle does still exist. Oh, in Chicago. Yeah, sliders. Yeah, mini burgers. Dude, I love I love going to a restaurant or like a brewery or a bar or whatever that has really good sl sliders and you get like a, a slider sampler, like three different types of sliders. Joe says, I just got a Turtle Beach Velocity 1. Nice. I've never used it, but I, from people that are on Xbox, they've said that it's really good. People seem to like that a lot, the Velocity. And they have rudder pedals now too, right? Slider flight. <laughs> All right, still at the Dune screen. You're not missing anything. Look, who wants to see the Dune screen? Nobody. That's who. There it is. It's in windowed mode still. Uh, what is the next airport? Let me look it up. Uh, looks like is Los Rodi Los Rodeos G C X O Golf Charlie X Ray Oscar. So we're gonna go G C T S to G C X O. I think that's an O and not a zero. Looks like an O. We might just overfly the next one. It's on the same island. Okay, there we go. World map. Let's see if this fixes the stutters. All right, runway 07. Oh, the force feedback yoke. Was there a... Um, did, did Swiss make a video on that? I didn't watch it, but I saw the thumbnail. Jack says, starting a new job at the end of the month, looking forward to more opportunities to fly. You mean uh, opportunities before the end of the month to fly, <laughs> Jack? Or once, or is it is your job going to be chill enough where you'll be able to fly more because of it, because of changing jobs? And he says, got my 27. Oh, it's still stuttering. Look at it. Diamond Tree, 71 Bravo, Charlie, hold short. What is going on? Awaiting further instructions. I don't I don't understand what's happening here. I'm not losing any frames or anything like that that I can tell. I don't think it's a uh... Yeah, why is this happening? Dev mode, yeah. 
Yeah, this is this is weird. Uh, developers, developers, developers. Oh, it's freezing a lot. Let me turn off say intentions. It's gonna turn off everything I have running in the background. No, it's still doing it. I think this is a sim issue. Uh, let me turn off GSX. That server thing it had was running in the background. Yikes. Debug FPS. Whoops, that's wireframe. Limited by GPU. Maybe my GPU is finally exploding. Then it's saying limited by, what is it saying? It's flash, whenever it stutters, it's flashing something really quickly. Limited by main thread, I think is what it's saying. I'm trying to hit screenshot over and over so it'll freeze the screen. Limited by GPU. I mean, all of these are spiking here. GT draw, yeah, right here, main thread. All those little red lines on them. Something about the main thread. Yeah, main thread is CPU. And then in between where it says green, or it's green, it's saying limited by GPU. That is, wow, look at all those stutters. GPU 57 degrees Celsius. Oh, does it show my... It doesn't show my temperature here. I mean, I, even just putting my hand over my fans, like, it's pretty cool. Change servers. Yeah, this is this is really annoying. It's not going to be... Not going to be fun. Let me just go to East USA. I don't think it's going to change anything, though. Yeah, it's just, it's just happening no matter what. I can probably go offline. I restarted the sim. Whoops. No, not sign out. All right, back on to west. Um, let me try it. This is weird. I'm going to try a different plane. Sorry, I got to troubleshoot this because it's going to be freezing the entire time when we're flying. It's going to be, it's not going to be a good look. Let me just try a different plane and see if that changes anything. Not that it's easy to choose a plane to fly. I wish I could sort by tricycle gear and sort by cruise speed. That would be really nice. Get a faster plane. Oh man. What a pain. Just in case it works, I don't want to have to quit out again. Now I'll just get back in the DA, DA42. And I'll get the TDI because I don't want to go way faster and force you guys all to change your planes. Oh, let's just let's just try it and see if the stutters go away because it's not stuttering here on the main screen, so that's good. I th I think that's good. Okay, runway seven. So many planes, so little stream time. It's hard to make it lag. 
Well, I have done it. Chase says, I've been having bad performance, crashing for the last week. Never had before. So weird. Yeah, I restarted the sim too. It's still doing it. Look at that. I mean, it's still loading, but it's on like, if we watch where it's happening, it's like on a perfect cadence almost. It's like a perfect interval. As soon as the red line's almost on the left side, it hits it again. What is going on? Now, you know, it's not. It stopped. Look, it's better now. Uh, there's a little a little one here and there, but it's not freezing. Okay. Maybe it's something to do with a plane. You know what it could be is a PMS 50, maybe. This looks a lot better than it was. It was spiking really hard. It is, it is spiking a little bit, but it's not spiking so much that it's um, stopping my camera from working. So I think this is better. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, I feel like Maybe it's maybe it's the PMS fifty. Okay, we'll keep this then. DA forty. All right, sorry about that, guys. That was uh, that was pretty annoying. Whoops, oh, I always do that. You turn off developer mode and it keeps the FPS in the top. All right, developer mode. Here we go. All right, we're back. I see everybody. We can finally depart. It's happening. Get the TDS. Yeah, awesome with the built-in Navigraph. Yeah, I think that's a... I got the PMS 50 like lifetime one way back when the TDS wasn't available yet. So been on the PMS 50 train the whole time. On the tower for runway 331. All right, flaps are not set for takeoff position. Let's do that. And we're good there. And we're just flying to the east. We're just following the east coast of the island up to GCXO. I think we'll, we'll just overfly GCXO and then make our way to the other island to the east. All right, let's go full throttle. Whoops, parking brake, great. Landing light on, fuel pump on while we're on the roll. There we go. It's a little glitchy here and there. I don't know, like some of the names are coming in and out. Let's get a little smoother. Could be worse. Jack says the only annoying thing with the TDS is when you're doing Neofly or on air, it sends you to an airport not in Navigraph. Yeah, I feel like that happens a lot. All right, gear up. Dude, Galixian, thank you so much. 10 gifted memberships. Pull up your stools, couch captains. I do think I need to hit up sushi and get a bunch of new stools. Since the stool is the most common to see. Thanks, Galixian. Appreciate that so much, dude. Would you able to be able to join the multiplayer server? Yeah, of course, Blue Ninja. Yep, all you have to do is hop on USA West. My stool is up. Oh, how the tables have turned. The mountain was gifted a membership. <laughs> Papa A, disinformation alpha is current. Um, Speedy Blue Ninja, just make sure that you, uh, the instructions are in the video description, but go to the world map first and turn on all players. Otherwise, um, you might not see everybody. All right, let me turn this engine volume down. You know, I think I need to like, I don't know if this is something I can do with flow, but I need to change the engine volume so often. Every engine is different. 
in terms of how loud it is, and I end up having to turn them down so often. Alright, pull my power wind. back a little bit. Extending upwind, awaiting crosswind call, Skyhawk 9001 Bravo. Flaps are up, gear is up. Uh, Underdog says, one of your cores, your PCS to process a lot. Yep. Anything else in the background? That's definitely why I have the G3X, or the 7800, or sorry, the uh, G3X, 7800X3D. G3X, oh my gosh. Too many acronyms. Can't be in the beta version. Yeah, that's correct. Beta is on a different multiplayer server this time around. So none of us are running beta. There's there's not too much, like unless you really, really want the G3X, I don't see a reason to be running the beta yet. Um, I don't fly too many planes that have the G3X, but yeah, um, I am looking forward to the new sim update though, especially the, the ground handling improvements. That'll be really good. Let me give a little rudder trim to the right here. There we go. Oh, we have a working autopilot in this too. Altitude, nav mode, ah, relax. I can relax now. All right, I'll bring the load to 90% on both engines. There we go, load percent. Oh, do you like the A320 there, Brian? I haven't, uh, I haven't tried it either. What's up, Andy? I haven't tried the new A320, but yeah, I have, I've been dabbling with the Phoenix here and there, which is nice. Phoenix is, Phoenix is a great plane, as everybody says. Like the engine sound is so loud in this thing. As soon as you get outside, it's just like, ooh. I'm like, uh, I'm playing DJ here where I just got my hands on these sliders on my audio interface, trying to get, the, trying to keep things, uh, trying to keep things at reasonable volumes. Thanks again, Galixian. Diesel engines, yeah. I mean, I just have, I have the engine volume turned down to 30%. But if I don't turn down the volume on my interface, here's how loud they are at supposedly 30% volume. Here it comes. And this is inside, still almost the same volume. Separate volumes inside and out. You know, something you something you can do to get that effect already is go to general options, go to sound, and turn on headphone simulation. So if you turn on headphone simulation, you'll get like the Bose experience. So now the volume's at 100%. So it's much quieter. This gives you like the Bose, what is it? The A, is it A, A, A30, A20? It gives you the noise cancellation experience inside. Now, as soon as I go outside, it's gonna be super loud. Volume warning. So I'm not using that option though. So it, um, I have headphone simulation turned off because I wanna hear the engines a little, a little more inside. So I do that and then I go to sound, but look, I have aircraft engine at 30. 30 and, and it's like it's still too much and it's very very plane de dependent one plane to the next um could sound really really loud but yeah it's um yeah i wish they kind of like normalized the volume and the of the planes of the engines or something but you know it's just how it is it's, it's fine it's something to get used to there's a click spot on the da 42 oh yeah yeah um, yeah, the headphones down here, right? Yep. Yeah, so you can click right down here on the headphone jacks. Sorry, uh, correction. Runway 206 for 025. All right, we're just going to fly over this next air airfield up here. GCXO, just to save a little time. We lost some time there with me messing with all my settings and 
resetting everything. I'm in the DA42. The, it's the cow's DA42. It's basically um, like an improved... It's an older model than the DA62, but it's very similar. And um, since it's from a third-party developer, it's got a lot more modeled in it. So you have like working circuit breakers, probably a more realistic flight model. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's the predecessor to the DA62. It'd be nice if the radios worked between planes. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's something that's cool about, say, intentions is if you're flying with friends and you're on a CTAF frequency, you could call out to each other on the CTAF frequency. If you're at the same airport, you'll hear each other. Um, I don't know if they plan on doing this. They have the intercom feature where you talk to the you talk to the tour guides. It would be cool if you could like form a group and like talk to your group over radios. Yeah, I'm not sure. It, it would be cool to be able to just chat more casually between planes, basically. Oh, Darren says, I've been practicing my blender skills. Nice. Working on a Diamond DA50 model. Nice, man. I don't know anything about the DA50. Is that is that the newest single engine model? DA50? It's not electric, is it? Like TeamSpeak in the game. Yeah, I think most people just use Discord for it. Um, traffic will report midfield warrior tree seven discord's just Charlie. really popular for any kind of gaming so you just hop in the channel and chat to each other so yeah that's probably why it's not in any other software really it's everybody just uses discord for everything oh is it the electric one Darren? i think i saw like the real world video on that one when it got announced and like demoed or something on youtube Oh, you're watching in VR? Nice, Andy. Are you in like a cozy VR virtual room with like a giant projector and like a couch and a fireplace or something? <laughs> Do you need a headset? I mean, on if not not in the not in flight sim itself. I mean, you only need a headset if you're going to be using, you know, something like say Intentions or Vatsim, or if you're going to be in Discord. Discord has voice servers, voice channels, not just text. So you can hop into a voice channel. Like there's a couple on on the on our Discord server, but you can always add more if you guys end up using them a lot. But uh, there's not not a whole lot of activity on there usually. Usually it's um like Big Sierra was hosting some group flights in there, off, you know, separate from the stream flights, and you know there'd be like five or five or six people in there doing a flight together on the weekends. But yeah, Discord's a really good software. A VR? Oh, do you mean a VR headset? Or you, I mean a VR? I don't know if you meant, meant like a, a an audio headset, like I'm wearing. Uh, Battalion says I like to split my ATC and my headphones and the rest of the speakers. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so like the speakers are basically the ambient sound of the plane, right? And then in your headphones, you have ATC only, your radios and stuff. Yeah, that sounds realistic. I've heard of people doing that before. It's a good idea. Oh, this area looks awesome. This looks great. With the highway running across, this reminds me of like California. <laughs> Mountains, ocean. Yeah, lessens the sounds of the plane. Yep, like a canceling headset, yeah. Yeah, it seems like a good setup. I'm gonna turn autopilot off. I'm just gonna overfly this next airport over here. And then we're gonna head down to the southeast off to the next island. You'd miss so many radio calls if you didn't do it that way. Yeah, that's also why like I have the engine volume so low. Or I'll I'll use Basically, with the engine volume at 30%, I'm, I'm essentially using what this does down here, clicking. But not every plane has that. I don't want to look for it in every plane. 
So I just turned down. I just turned down the engine volume, and also because I don't want it to be extremely loud when I go outside of the plane. It is it is a bit louder, but it'll be even louder if you use the headphone simulation in the sound options, um, because that basically leaves the outside volume at 100%, and then turns down the inside volume by like you know down to 20% or something like that. Uh, Polish But yeah, I, I like the, uh, the the planes that do have the headphone simulation are usually pretty good. It's just not something you can find in every single plane, so. All right, just going to overfly this field. Yeah, Blue Ninja, do it. Join us. You can take off right from here if you want. We're passing by GCXO Golf Charlie X Ray Oscar. And then we're about to turn and go to the southeast. We're going to make our way to another island. I know what's going on with the blue down there on the runway? And I love the diamonds. I just wish they had a little better visibility. Like if this panel wasn't so rounded like this and somehow it could be lower profile and have the standby instruments down below. Like this space would be more visible. I don't know. I also have it at a pretty wide field of view. It's not bad. There's somewhere below called Taco. We're gonna have to make a pit stop. Contact Winifoon 118 decimal 525. What's up, Delta? Delta says, I've heard of when pigs fly. Today I'm seeing the cows. Yeah, this plane stops for tacos. Absolutely. Stops for tacos 9 out of 10 times. Stops for burritos 12 out of 10 times. Yeah, there is taco right there. Tacos, one mile. Starboard side. All right, off to the next island. I'm gonna give it some more power here. I'm in the TDI version, so I'm a little slower than the. What is it? The six or whatever? Right base runway two one for Bonanza. November six four Foxtrot Alpha two. Is World War Three about to start? According to the news, pretty much every day, which is why I don't really pay attention. <laughs> I just keep doing my thing, you know? If it keeps you on the edge of your seat thinking that it is, then, uh, you know, and you enjoy that, then keep believing what you want. Doesn't, you know, they're working on it. You just ate lamb chops. Nice. I'm not a big lamb fan myself. I've tried lamb a couple times and never really liked it. You know what's delicious though? Duck. I went to this place that had like duck tacos. Really, really good. You just made tacos? Heck yeah. <laughs> You're only prepared for zombie apocalypse. Yeah, not World War III. Yeah, I'd much rather have the zombie apocalypse. That's what all of us have been, pre been preparing for, for the longest time. That's why we fly in the simulator, you know? 
so we can uh, in real life get into a plane during the actual zombie apocalypse and forget half of the steps to start it and then the zombies get to us and it's over but at least we hit a few buttons you know in my thousand, thousands of hours in simming, I'll at least probably be able to find the battery switch before I get eaten alive by zombies. And then I'll be, they'll be gnawing away and I'll be like, it was worth it. I knew where one button was in the cockpit and forgot all the rest. Does it matter which plane? Not really. I'm flying, the planes that I'm usually flying are around 150 knots cruise speed, so it's just up to you. You can fly something faster or slower if you want. You might have to circle around us and catch up again or, you know, better to, f I would just fly, fly like a turboprop or a twin is a good idea. DA-62. Everybody has the DA-62. That's a good choice. And easy to fly. Let's check our dog, see how he's doing. You looked yesterday, you've been in Zero flights in 1,500 hours. Nice. Yeah, let me check the Xbox app. I don't even have 1,000 hours logged in the sim itself in the log book because I do such short flights. So I'm not doing like an eight-hour flight and going AFK for most of it. I have 3,027 hours according to uh, according to the Xbox app. I've just I passed 3,000 hours, but that just really means having the sim open. You know, I could have left it open for a day and got another 20 hours, but it matters how much how what type of flying you do because there like I have few hours compared to a lot of simmers because I'm I do such short flights. Um. It's pretty rare that I have a flight that's more than one hour long. So to get 900 and, you know, almost a thousand hours in short flights takes a really long time. If you fly the, like, if you fly the airliners exclusively, you're going to hit that much faster. Especially if you set it up on autopilot and, you know, go do your taxes or whatever. Can I do a group flight with Captain Canada? I'm down to, yeah, I'm down to do a group flight with anybody. I don't really like collaborate, you know, with other creators or anything. I watch I watch some some stuff when it's recommended to be on YouTube. So I'm kind of just in my own little world. And so many creators like I hate that word creator, but anyway, so many yeah, streamers and stuff do do airliner flights. I'm just not into uh not into the airliners as much, but That kind of stuff is just, uh, it, it's kind of complicated to do. Just like, you have to kind of know the person and you have to coordinate, like, you know, like try not to talk over each other if you're on Discord together or what then, you know? So I'm used to just being being on the mic myself. <laughs> just trying to talk nonstop, you know? Barbecue pork tacos. Beautiful. Yeah, that sounds good. Mrs. T5 is back. Sim influencer. Ugh. Oh god. It just sounds wrong. I hate I hate the terms. Listen, just just make some YouTube videos, okay? That's it. It doesn't need to sound more uh, glamorous than it is. <laughs> Zero two Papa, welcome to State College Regional. Contact ground on one two five point seven two five. Simfluencer. I don't know which, uh, I've been trying to think of a video to make next. I haven't made a video since January. When I put out the, like, the fly to any airport one. Um, I think maybe the step after that would be for the people that watched that video and liked it and use the visual approaches. I mean, I have a couple ILS ones already, so... I don't know that I don't have a video after that one. Like I have a, several with the ILS stuff and RNAV stuff, which is still still relevant. So. Acknowledge Diamond Tree Seven One Bravo Charlie. West USA. We're on the West USA server. Yeah, if you go up to the top right up here and click your name. 
Just choose West USA. Part of the reason we're on West USA is because Say Intentions multiplayer. Uh, they try to get people to all use West USA. So then um, if you happen to hear someone on your frequency and they're using Say Intentions, then you'll also see them. So everybody is on the same uh, multiplayer server. Right to 240, contacting departure Skyhawk, 542 Alpha X-Ray. Are we stopping at GCLP? Yeah, I think we should because we have to go down here. We're going to go around the entire island on this one, it looks like. We have GCLB, Lima Bravo first, and then Lima, Lima Papa. So yeah, I think we'll do a touch and go at Lima Bravo and then land at Lima Papa. Even if we just land and uh, just taxi back around and take off again. That guy says I've been flying for 47 years. Crazy. That is awesome. Used to fly for the FAA. Airspace Systems Engineer. I will not pretend to know what that job entails. Sounds, uh... Sounds very fancy. <laughs> Airspace Systems Engineer. What does that mean? Do you help define airspaces by flying? Like defining where the shelves are or something for like a, like a Bravo airspace or something like that? Airspace systems. Yeah, I still haven't uh, haven't flown a real plane in any capacity, so. The diamonds are such cool planes. I was watching some Meridian videos to try to learn about the hot start that I experienced last time. And I guess you pretty much need to be, you need to be ready on the fuel condition lever in that plane, which just has like two positions, basically like fuel cutoff or run. It's more like a switch than a lever, but it doesn't have any in between. It's just either fuel is on or off basically. But apparently when you're starting it up, you just need to be watching, you know, especially your ITTs. And it's, if they start getting up into the danger area, you have to pull that fuel condition lever to cut off and then turn the starter off by hitting the button button in the overhead. Um, yeah, apparently uh, the, the guy I was watching on YouTube, he was talking about how like that's the most dangerous and scary part about flying the plane is just the startup. And he was talking about how he's seen people mess up the startup or use the GPU when they weren't supposed to or something like that and cause like hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage just during the startup process. I'm like, oh man, it sounds like me last stream. You've been on flight sim since the late 80s. Nice. I remember, I don't know what sim I used when I was a kid, but uh, my dad had, had the old school flight sims. I'm not sure which one it was exactly. But um, yeah, I I, I had re I haven't used the sim again until I started simming in X Plane Eleven. Think of the cost of that GPU incident. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely messed up the uh, I messed up the engine bad. I had to restart the plane to get it to get it going again. Flight Sim 3.1. Oh, that guy says I designed airspace, installed radars, NDB, VORs, radios, and flight tested them. That is so cool. Very cool. Andy says started on Flight Sim 2002 at my uncle's house, Flight Sim 9, and FSX, and now this. Yeah, I started on X-Plane 11 three months before Flight Sim 2020 came out, so I am the greenest of everybody, pretty much. Flight Sim 24? Yeah, this year. I'm excited for it. Even if it's a glorified update, I want it. First solo flight at Meigs Field? Nice, Greg. They still have Meigs in the sim, right? I remember, didn't they bring it back sometime like last year? Pro Pilot 98. 
Man, I don't even know which one I played when I was a kid. X-Plane 12 is lonely. Yeah, I agree. I did try X-Plane 12 when it came out, and I also very much dislike how you bind keys in X-Plane. Hyper Zero Victor Bravo, runway 30 cleared to land. You know, it got turned into a park, yeah. They brought it back. Yeah, it was cool that they brought it back to the sim. You're gonna date yourself and say Flight Sim 98 was your first? How does that... That doesn't date yourself. <laughs> Flight Sim 1998? If you said, like, Flight Sim 78, <laughs> I don't even know if there was a Flight Sim until the 80s. I mean, Flight Sim 2020 was basically my first serious one. I was I was playing X-Plane 11. And it's not because of an age thing. It's just because I wasn't simming, you know? Flight Sim 1888. <laughs> yeah, 1981. Is that the first Flight Sim? If you use floppy disk and dial up, you're old. Yep. Yeah, dial up internet was amazing. It was horrible, but good memories. You were lucky if you had a dedicated phone line. Hope they port Infinite Flight. I haven't played Infinite Flight. I don't really know anything about it, actually. All right, it wants us to follow the coast here. Yeah, five and a quarter, three and a half, zip disks, laser disk, you know, you had a family member that had an incredible laser disc system to watch movies on. 90s baby, so still young. Got that guy says I'm old, but people say I look like I'm 40. Nice. That's nice to hear. Dial up, yeah. Tried to play Doom with a friend. Your sister picks up the phone. <laughs> 40s old. Old is, uh, you know, young and old is just always relative to your age. There's always old and young from everybody's perspective. Like if you're in your 20s, you're like, oh man, that kid who's 19, a few years younger than me is so young. It's like, what? <laughs> and then you're like, oh man, someone 10 years older is ancient. Yeah, time flies. You'll be 40 before you know it. You'll be 30 before you know it. And the mountain, actually, the detail here looks really good. Terrain detail looks awesome. Your daughter could squeal and knock you offline. It was weird having, uh, having phone lines. Laserdisc arcade game. No, no. I never played that. We had a Coleco when I was a kid, and I think we had some gaming system where it was like my older brothers, and you put in a literal cassette tape for the video game. I forget what system that is. I don't think it was Coleco. Coleco had like big cartridges, I think. But there was some video game system where it was run on a cassette tape, like a music cassette tape. It was super weird. I barely remember it, but it was very unique. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Cassette? We're getting some cool uh, downdrafts here. Flight simulator before World War II? Oh, Commodore 64, was that it? Maybe it was a Commodore 64. It's a very, um, a very vague memory, but uh, Blue Ninja, we're coming up to GCLB, Golf Charlie Lima Bravo, and Golf Charlie uh, Lima Papa are both coming up. Put this in the corner for a little reference. There we go.
Commodore 64. Oh, Vic 20. Was that it? I don't even know what the name was. Like, I'll have to Google it to see. I just remember it had some, like, flying game. It was like you're flying a spaceship or something through a canyon. It was, like, very uh, futuristic, like, looking. It wasn't meant to be realistic, look like, in any way. I mean, the graphics wouldn't let it anyway. But I just remember it was, like, a wire mesh, like, canyon kind of thing you were flying through in, like, uh, some sort of plane or ship or something. It's such a vague memory. So loud outside. The mayor bulldozed the airport. Uh, are you talking about Meigs? We'll add a little bit of power here. Actually, like for flight sim, just based on, based on the like YouTube information I get, like almost every age group is simming. Like they're almost all equal, which is really cool. Like the 18 to 24 and the 65 plus are not far off, just a few percentages off. It's like pretty much even the whole way, from 18 to 65 plus groups, uh, as far as YouTube stats. So it's it's kind of amazing. Like flight sim is kind of a hobby for everybody. Pretty cool. Uh, I am using live weather, but I'm not using live time because it would be dark right now. Um, so yeah, I have live weather on. It's pretty clear. We haven't had uh, too much wind. Like down when we're on short final, the wind hasn't been more than a couple knots yet. Um, and then time of day, yeah, I pulled it back just so we have, uh, since this is real time right here, it's, it's nighttime now. You've seen 12 year olds on DCS? Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's great that, um, that flight simming is such a, has like such a wide audience, like all sorts of ages. It's either like people that are younger that, you know, aspire to be pilots or they just like the fun of flying around the world virtually. And, you know, yeah, it's great. People like me who don't aspire to be pilots, but just think it's really, really cool. <laughs> Love the challenge of it. And then probably just tons of former pilots or, you know, people that can't fly in real life anymore that are simming now because of, you know, medical reasons or age or, you know, whatever. Some sort of disability that prevents them from flying. It, it's it's amazing. It's just like, uh, yeah, it's awesome that it's a, a hobby that everybody can have and has it for so many different reasons. It's really cool. Dude, look at this down. This looks so cool. It's weird there's not a marker on this little city here. I guess they're all very similar around this area. All like right along the ocean on the cliffs. Oh, race car games also as a hobby, yeah. Yeah, I never got it. I never got into racing. I'm not really interested in it, but definitely more interested in flying, obviously. <laughs> Don't fly or drive a car for medical reasons, and both are cool. Yeah, I mean, I can't. And also, that's why VR is so awesome, right? Uh, Sir Nigel says, I know of at least three simmers who are over 80. Oh, yeah. Yeah, literally all ages. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've been on Vatsim before in the past where you'll hear somebody that's probably under 10 years old on Vatsim learning to do it. It's great. Oh, that guy says, I fly with guys in their 80s. Real planes.
Oh, I don't know if Jeep is still here, but every time uh, we talk about real planes, yeah, I'm thinking like, when am I gonna, when am I gonna fly? If I, am I ever gonna fly? Take a discovery flight, but uh, irresponsible Jeep guy in the chat said he um, did his first discovery flight. And is gonna post something in Discord. Maybe it's in there already. I haven't, I haven't caught up on Discord yet. I don't think he posted it yet, but yeah, he was gonna share his discovery flight, a video from his discovery flight with us. You play Microsoft Flight Sim, I'm 16. Yeah, it's it's all ages, it's awesome. I felt like 80 this morning when I woke up. Yeah, because of a hangover. Yeah, I've had I've had some basically I have like some work events happening over this week and next week where I'm going to a bunch of work dinners and stuff with with coworkers and uh Definitely trying to avoid that, <laughs> Darren. Uh, Battalion says, my son's eight. He does the Young Eagles flight program. Flies four times a year for free. Your son is braver than I am. I think if I get laid off from my job again, I might, that might be the time to go do a discovery flight. Of course, I don't want that to happen, obviously, but if it does, that might be the, the trigger for me to go and finally try it. My God, dude, the scenery along this island is so awesome. With all these buildings look so unique too. We had a bunch of like circular, circular buildings back there and intersection. What is this? And there are no points of interest marked here. All right, let me double check. I, I'm pretty sure I have the points of interest turned on. Yeah, I have, I have landmarks on and the cities on, but it's not pointing anything out, but the, dude, what an awesome area this is. I'm just gonna overfly this field. Yeah, it's right under us. I wasn't even paying attention, but we'll do a we'll do a landing at the one just north of here. We have C G L P, or sorry, G C L P, Golf Charlie Lima Papa, just a couple miles north. It looks like. Gonna do a full stop there, and then I'll just back taxi again, and then take off probably. But we'll have a little rally point there. Now let's see what runways we have over there. Three right, three left and right, two one left. We'll just do three left and right. Watch out for the wind farm. Yeah, look at this thing. This is massive. And even the roads look pretty good here. As far as like the level of detail and um, yeah, all the terrain around here looks great. All the cities and towns look awesome. Like very highly detailed here. We see a tiny blue plane that looks like a DA-62. Oh, you're on the runway? Okay, yeah, we'll see your name when we get closer. Just make sure you're on USA West, Blue Ninja. Like up here at the top right, where it shows your name. You, can, you can't really see it because it's blocked by the thing, but anyway, the top right up here, hit that and make sure you're on West USA. Uh, I don't see your name yet though. You also have to make sure that you have all players turned on from the world map. There's instructions in the video here. I'll, I'll put them in the chat. There's a little macro for it. So on the world map, make sure you have uh, all players set in flight conditions. Otherwise, you might not see people. 
You checked out the wind farms? Oh, they speed up with the wind, but don't... Oh, don't turn into the wind? Yeah, I wouldn't expect them to turn. They're just fixed, right? Because otherwise they could hit each other. Yeah, I think they're fixed. I think wind turbines are a fixed spot. I don't think they, they waver left and right. Maybe there are some that do that? All right, I see the runways right in front of us here. You can take your pick. Looks like the one on the left is a little bit longer. I'm going to do a full stop here. And I'm just going to go back and then uh, take off again. Actually, actually, no, no, can't. Uh, yeah, cancel that. Let's just do. Let's just do a touch and go again. We just have a lot of ground to cover. I'm just. You can either overfly the field or just do a touch and go because we have. Uh, we have a ways to go. I want to finish the uh, finish the route. I feel like if we yeah, if we do too many full stops, we're going to not have enough time. Delta 398 wins 2 9 or 4 at 1 3. Runway 26 left, clear to land. Alright, 50% power. I need to just go idle, get slowed down enough. Alright, 25% power. Gear down. What is the gear? Uh. 152 knots. Okay, yeah. So as long as we're in the green, we can lower the gear, it looks like. Alright, just gonna do a touch and go. Flaps one. I'm just gonna leave it in the takeoff flaps position. Very shallow approach. This is way too low. Lots of runway though. Alright, here we go. Kazuya, thanks for the super chat, dude. GM baby woke me up. She loved the view of the plane. Whoa, that sounded way harder than it was. Alright, back to full power. Oh, good morning. Baby woke me up. <laughs> she loves the view of the plane. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for the 199. Butter. 148 is not bad. I feel like I, I want it to be under 100. Sounded like an oof. Yeah, that sounded way more violent than the feet per minute makes it seem. All right, let's see if my drone camera works now. Yes, it does. I have to watch both runways at the same time. You love playing Ultra... Oh, I don't know what Ultra Wings is either. You know, this is the only, like, flight sim game I, I use, or flight sim software I use anymore. <laughs> game. Don't hate. Don't hate. Yeah, I don't really try any other ones. A while back, I tried DCS, but I'm just not into combat, like, combat sims. Pretty much all the flying I do is in Microsoft Flight Sim. See if I can target anybody here. 
I love this target feature. I just wish it was easier to use. How it just auto follows. Looks, it makes it look like I have the best drone control. Nice, Ryan's in the Bronco. Dude, the Bronco just looks so cool. I love how it has a, that like tail. I don't even know what, what it's called when the tail is like set up in this, you know, like, I don't even know what that like rectangular format. I don't know what it's called, but the, uh, the Beach 18 has a similar looking tail to it. Alright, and unpause. There we go. Coming in for a landing. Oh, I thought you were taking off, Ninja. Do I see you? I don't know that I see your name. It might be different than what you have in YouTube. Oh, the split tail. There we go. Oh, that makes sense. Alright, we got our maker way to the east now. We're island hopping again. This is gonna be... Oh no, there are, I guess it looks like technically there are two more islands to the east. Let me get the autopilot on. Time to be a little lazy. Heading mode, nav mode. Which airport? We are passing, let's see, we just passed by, let me find the code again. It was GC, is it GCLP? Yeah, GCLP. Golf Charlie Lima Papa, GCLP, and now we're headed to the east. That island, that was the coolest island so far, like the, the terrain and then all the cities and towns along the coast. That was the highlight so far. How long do we have left? I think we're not even halfway yet. <laughs> there were a lot of turns here, so maybe, yeah, we're, it says we're a little more than halfway on the, the chart at the top. But it feels more like, it feels more like a little less than halfway. Uh, so nice and quiet in here. I still have the flaps. Still have the flaps out. Let's bring those back. All right, ninety percent on the power. Wonder how our fuel is doing. Getting low. Gonna wear like a quarter tank. Almost a fifth a tank. One, two, three, four. No, that's six. A sixth. No, a fifth. Sorry. Which plane am I in? I'm in the DA-42, so it's going to be similar to the DA-62. If you have the 62. I think everybody has the 62. Maintain the blue line until you're in the airport environment. Then pull back to the red line. Where's the blue and red line? Is that is that on your uh, is that on air? Is that so, don't certain airspeed indicators have a blue and a red line on them? Is that what you're talking about? Gonna use the Comanche. Oh yeah, dude, the Comanche is so good. I'm gonna slow down a little bit so we can all catch up here. Bring it back to like 75. There we go. 75 percent power. DA-42 turboprop. Uh, I think they're... I don't... Are they turbo... They're diesel engines, I think. Um, I don't think they're turboprop engines. I should know the answer to this. I'm pretty sure they, they take Jet A fuel, don't they? The, the diamonds. Instead of 100 low lead, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure they take Jet A, and it has like a full fade deck, so all you have is a power thro uh, a power lever here, a throttle setting, because it's handling the prop for you, um, and it's 
Yeah, it's just all controlled by the Fadex, so you just have a throttle and that's it. Let me look up the DA42 engines. Yeah, it says uh, DA42 is powered by two Jet A fueled four cylinder diesel engines. Engines are either the Teeler 1.7 liter 135 or a Mercedes Benz, oh, based on a Mercedes Benz car engine, or the Centurion 2 liter 135 engine. Aircraft is powered by a, uh, oh, a power level, single power level lever control. Yeah, it says, uh, yeah, two Jet A fueled four cylinder compression ignition or diesel, diesel, AKA diesel engines. I did know that it takes Jet A fuel. I think it's actually written, uh, maybe not on this one. Maybe it's on the DA62. It's like proudly written on the side, like Jet A, you know, it like says it on the fuselage or something like that on the default livery. Um, how do you AFK and autopilot? Um, you have to have the flight plan put in. Like I have a, I don't make a ton of tutorials lately, but a bunch of the tutorials I have show you how to use the different avionics and put your flight plan in. But yeah, it's just about going to the FPL section and putting in your waypoints, or you can do it from the world map and then turning on, um, autopilot and turning on nav mode on your autopilot. And you know, um, you have to fly, you have to be close to the course before nav mode will work, but. Yeah, that's the, those are the basics. Put in a flight plan and use nav mode on the autopilot. Clear to land runway one, two, Beechcraft, Niner, zero, zero, one, Bravo. Uh, where should you set your departure and arrival? I mean, generally, like, uh, you'd have to, if you want all the waypoints I have, you'd have to import the flight plan back on the world map. But we just have, I think it's just two more, looks like two more airports. Pretty much just follow the group. <laughs> But you can put in the next airport right here, GCFV. Actually, is it, let me, let me check. We'll probably end up overflying them instead of landing fully at them. LEBK is coming up and then GCFV. And then our final one is down here, GCRR. So yeah, the next one is Lima, Echo, Bravo, Kilo, Leb K, L E B K. Yeah, before the stream, I, I, so in the flight description, or sorry, in the video description, I linked to the flight plan from the World Tours website where I get them from. And then usually I'll put them in the Discord as well. So you can import them before the flight if you want every single waypoint. But. Besides that, you can just put them in. You can just do a direct. <gasps> no. Oh no, this is just certain death. I can't even attempt it. There's not an island anywhere nearby. No, this is impossible. This is just death. This is the absolute worst time. I can't do it. There's nowhere to land. Well, a rule is a rule. We're going in the water. Oh no. It's over. Engine's off. The only thing we can do is go into the water. We're going down. It's the rule. I mean, we're just, we're toast. Is there anything? There's literally nothing. I'd have to turn around and we're not gonna make it. Is there a boat out there? Ooh, there's a boat. Okay, we're gonna land on the boat. We're gonna land near the boat for rescue. All right, what's our glide? I don't think our glide is listed over here. Sorry, this song, this song hasn't come on in like weeks. This means that I have to turn the engines off. This is the turn the engines off and land song. All right, we're gonna need the nearest radio frequency. We got a tower center. 
one, two, three, six, five. Actually, Alpha Grunt Tower, enter left downwind for runway two, three. Center, Diamond 63 Echo, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Uh, we are about five miles east of Golf Charlie Lima Papa, and we're going to be putting it down in the water. We see a cargo ship in front of us. 63 Echo. Oh no. This is just. I got to keep the song going. All right, yeah, we got a cargo ship in front of us. It looks like it's about five miles away. Can you uh, hail them and let them know to come pick us up in the water? We're about to go down in uh, two minutes. Six three echo. Uh oh. Uh oh. I can't even get the flaps out. Uh oh. We're stalling and we're going 1,300 feet per minute. This is not good. Uh oh. We're gonna have to just. Oh no. This is this is rip. It's a thousand feet per minute. We're we're dead. We're dead. It's over. All right, we're floating. We're floating. Get the battery off. <laughs> we're not gonna be able to take off from the water, but hey, at least the uh, at least the long wings help us stay be a little more buoyant, maybe. Oh, I, I shouldn't have turned the battery off. I need the radios. Help us! Get over here. Look. <laughs> Friend request. <laughs> Don't be that one guy and abuse it. Oh yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to do that. You can't. You also can't call in like terrorist activity or anything like that. Uh, we're in the water. Six three echo. We're, uh, we're not really moving. I don't know why I put the gear down. That's a bad idea. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Uh-oh. The dog is fine. It almost looks like we're actually sinking. Because the waves are the waves are so good. And by good, I mean terrifying. Alright, well. Unfortunately, the boat's not actually going to come help us. <laughs> <laughs> Crack the doors. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, yeah, we have the canopy. I guess that's a, also a nice feature of the diamond. That's actually pretty great. I wonder, I actually wonder safety wise if like the extra wing length helps if you're bailing out in water and the canopy makes it so you can, like, the door is more accessible, I guess, to open. I don't know. It's kind of. As long as you don't like flip upside down or something. Check gear. All right. Well, that's just silly. There's, there's no way. We're just there, the only thing you can do is put it in water. What else could we do? Check gear. All right, we're gonna do the quick start and slew up into the air. Interstellar two looks wild. <laughs> uh, Diamond DA sixty two is good, Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can't start in the water. What are you doing? All right, maybe if I slew up high enough and get it started in the air, maybe that'll work. Ooh. Oh, is the trim like, whoa, there we go. All right, we're restarted. This is um, realistic starting procedure. Don't worry about it. This is totally normal. Check gear. All right, we're back just like that. Easy, easy, realistic Best recovery. Romeo Charlie winds calm. Runway three one, cleared for takeoff. 
Center. Diamond 6-3 Echo, we've levitated into the air and recovered. You can cancel our Mayday call. We're fine now. Proceeding on course. Thanks for your help. <laughs> Always carry a waterproof marine radio. I don't know if we have one of those in here. Roger. Radar service terminated. Squawk VFR. All right, we'll squawk VFR 63 Echo. <laughs> we just survived that easy. I mean, that was just no problem. Highly realistic simulation here. You see a bunch of planes on the map? Yeah, it's probably all of us, yeah. All right, that is silly. I don't know how to ditch in water anyway. Clearly, I don't know how. Yeah, cracking, I wonder if... I. I guess, I don't know if you can crack the canopy in this, but I guess you would just unlatch it so it's cracked a little bit. And yeah, I don't know why I put the gear down just to force a habit. Definitely should have kept the gear up. And we hit way too hard. I think we hit at like 700 feet per minute, which sounds devastating. All right, let me get on the course again here. What's up, Kevorkian? Yeah, we're in the Canary Islands. I don't know where that is specifically. Is that is that another name for the Canary Islands? Or is that one of the islands? We're going west to east along the Canary Islands. We are getting towards the last two islands. I don't know the name of each island. And LEBK is our next airport. ECU A and B fail. I don't know if I can reset them somehow. Maybe if I find the circuit breakers. Final one nine right. All right, I'm gonna get the autopilot back on. Let me see. If I, I don't know how to clear these these ECU failures. Dimbit five four one four, read back. Correct. Expect runway two seven. I assume I, maybe I can shut one of them down and the one can take over while I'm resetting the other one. Oh, it's the fourth island from the west. Okay. Fourth island from the west. Oh, is that the one we just passed by then? This was the one I thought looked the coolest so far. Yeah, maybe that's the one we just passed by. The the terrain there, like the mountains and the, all the uh, different uh, cities along the along the ocean, were really really cool looking. Cleared for takeoff runway two one Skyhawk five four. Yeah, the gear Alpha makes you flip. Yeah, for the water landing. Yeah, Cirrus has a parachute. Yeah, the parachute would be really nice. No parachute in the diamond though. The Cirrus has one, and then Four the Romeo Sling... Actually, the only workable parachute I know about in the sim is the one in the FS Reborn Sling. The Sling S4, or they call it the Sting S4, and it has an actual working parachute you can deploy. Uh, it's really cool. The Cirrus does not, does not have a functional one in the sim yet. Oh, that was Gran Conneria. That one was awesome. That one was awesome. Is it Tenerife? Tenerife? Fourth island from the west. So maybe that's the one we're coming to now. All right. I don't know how to fix the ECU failures. The swap is set to auto. We have the test. I, I tried pulling the breaker over here.
Breaker didn't seem to do anything. It just says fail either way. So I'm not sure if I can fix it in flight. Might need to be on the ground to fix it, I'm not sure. I mean, the engine is... Seems to be performing fine. RPMs are not in the red or anything like that. Switch the ECU from auto to A. I didn't, maybe I didn't wait long enough. Shouldn't they say ECUA here? Swap is set to auto on both. Or I can switch to B. So maybe I switch to B on both of them and then take A out. Yeah, I'm not sure that it's having any effect, but it's fine. The engine, the engine seems to be working fine. Are we going to land at any airport? Yeah. Um, let's see. I think we... Yeah, we're three hours in. We should probably take a break at the next airport. We don't have that far to go, though. We're like three quarters of the way done with the route. So we have Leb K. LEBK is coming up. Lima, Echo, Bravo, Kilo, L-E-B-K. That one's coming up next. Cessna Bravo, Oscar X-ray report, three miles. I think I'm kind of a fanboy of FS Reborn. Like the Sling S4 has the only working parachute and it's such a cool little experimental or like a ultralight. A little two-seater with a, with a working parachute in it. Very, very cool and has wear and tear. And then the the M500 obviously is like one of my favorites. It's just it's just insane. I, I think FS Reborn is like might be my favorite developer. Between those two planes, I think it would be if they release a plane that has an um, an analog cockpit. I think that they could win over a lot of people who really, really want analog stuff. And I feel like Black Square is like the go-to for the best kind of analog analog panels that are out there. But um, FS Reborn just does such a good job on their planes too and has those... There, there's always like an extra feature like the parachute or the passenger loading stuff, the wear and tear systems, all with the failures in them. Like, I don't know, it just it's really, really good. What's up, water cooled? You missed the stream? No, you're here right now. You lie. You're here. Live. All right, let's get some information about the next airport here. Now, there's no EFB in this, right? In the DA-40, so I can't look up. Uh, I guess I can look up charts through, the, through here. L-E-B-K. No info available. All right, runways three and two one are three five and one seven. Wait, are they really 750 feet long? Oh, maybe we're not landing here. 750 feet? I don't know about that. That sounds a little sketchy. Hey, that guy. Yo, thanks for hanging out, man. See you on another flight. Sounds good. Have a good rest of your day. Sounds like a helipad. Yeah. All 
Uh, Blue Ninja, you don't have to set your arrival. Just uh, just pick an airport that's in front of us as your departure and take off and just find us. You can just follow us. That, that's the easiest way. Oh, we're getting stutters again. Yeah, it's 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 doing it again. What is going on today? Take the beaches low. Okay, let's do it. All right, autopilot's off. Landing challenge, yeah. Almost hitting our maximum allowed speed here. What? Call Feffy? Close. Almost. You're gonna land there in the uh, in the DA62. All right, good luck. <laughs> yeah, 700 feet doesn't sound great. Oh, you crashed, Bell uh, Beldelin. See, that's why you just leave crash damage off, though. You can just recover from it. Hit Y twice to flip your plane and then take off from the beach. Or you can hit Y. If you're on PC, you hit Y like Yankee and then hold the F4. That'll bring you way up into the air. And then you can just try to get the engine restarted or whatever from up there like I did earlier from the water. Speedy, just, uh, just pick an airport. <laughs> There's LebK is coming up in front of us. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, LebK. Just start at L-E-B-K or G-C-F-V. If you can see them on the map on the bottom right. Yeah, just pick anywhere near us. You could even click anywhere near us on the map and just say depart. Um, and that'll put you in, in the air right next to us. You can kind of spawn it right on top of us. I think you said you found us on the map, right? I wonder how our fuel is doing here. I haven't, I haven't refilled. All right, we got like five gallons on each side. Is that five gallons remaining? Yeah, I think it is. And our fuel flow is five gallons an hour. So we'll need to stop at this airport and refuel. Or we can do a mid-air refueling. Looks like we got some more turbine farms up. Oh, everybody disappeared again. Yeah, I'm getting those little micro stutters here and there. I, I, Flight Sim 2024, I really hope, like with the new foundation of the sim, that they're like they're like rebuilding a lot of stuff. I really hope it lets them get rid of a lot of these problems, these little like tiny glitches and loading problems. It's kind of weird. For having like really high PC specs and good internet, it's uh, it's a little weird when it happens. I think we should skip Lebk because it's got a 700 foot runway, so uh, it's going to be difficult for a lot of us to land there or, t or take off from there. So, yeah, I think we should plan to land at GCFV instead, right here. Why does it do that? I click <laughs> this this 
thing can be a little weird. Yeah, look, I click it and then uh, I have to undo that, I guess, every time. Okay. Oh, it's uh, Forte Ventura. Yeah, so we'll land here just briefly. Can refuel there. Looks like runway one might be okay. The wind hasn't been too bad here, so. I want to fly over that 700 foot runway one, though. Uh, here, Leb K. Del Yarde. I want to fly over it just to see how small the runway is. It might not even be, it might be a dirt strip or something. Slewed up to us. Yeah, everyone disappeared. Yeah, it's gone, it's gone in and out a few times for me during the flight today. You know, flight sim multiplayer stuff, and maybe we're stressing the servers when there's like 30 of us flying around together, but yeah, it just kind of always happens. Flight Sim 2024 will save the day, I'm sure. I'm hoping. Not being sarcastic either. I really hope that it's like a big, a big upgrade to the foundation of the of the sim. As usual, I just naturally climb way higher. <laughs> I have a problem staying slow to the ground. Low to the ground. Can't help myself. I think it's because I anticipate the Mayday song. That's probably what it is. Being low to the ground is just scary, so. Altitude equals time. Is that an actual point of interest over here or another city? No, uh, I see the little dots for like the POIs, but I'm not sure that any of these are actually like sim points of interest that they put in. Like buildings and stuff like that, statues. so loud. Yes, earlier one of you guys mentioned that uh, people are asking for a, a separate volume slider for like inside and outside engine volume. That would be great. Got a real life vision jet. Man, that would be insane. How much is a vision jet? Vision jet price. 3.6 million dollars for the G2 vision jet. <laughs> 3.6 million dollars. Yeah, right. I'm going to need to make a lot more YouTube videos to get a vision jet. <laughs> I'm going to need like 5 million subscribers. Yeah, the vision jet, when we were at Santa Monica Airport and there was a vision jet there last year, um, it, you couldn't even walk up to it. They had it like roped off. They didn't want anybody even getting close to the thing. <laughs> you could just look at it. Look at it from a 20 foot, uh, 20 feet away. That's all they trusted people to do. Like a Lamborghini for the sky. Looks pretty incredible. Yeah, imagine the ongoing cost. Yeah, parking, storage, maintenance, fuel. Yeah. <laughs> We're all poor. What, are we, what failure are we getting here? Something is flashing and then going away over and over again. And it's gone. It's probably a low fuel warning. Oh, 
hundred and something dollars. I think it depends on your currency, but yeah, in U.S. dollars, I, I think it's like 30 or 35 maybe. But uh, the Vision Jet's gonna be in Flight Sim 2024 for free, right? I think it's gonna become a default plane, so everybody's gonna have um, everybody's gonna have the Vision Jet in Flight Sim 2024. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think that's a fuel warning that's like, yeah, fuel low, right? Fuel low. <laughs> it's because it's uh, the fuel sloshing around in there when we do this, so uh, the alert's coming on and off. All right, here comes Leb K. We'll take a look at this airport or this little strip that's coming up. I'm gonna have to refuel when we land over here at, um, was it Fuenteventura? Fuerteventura. Is Flight Sim dropping this year? I hope so. It would be a little weird if it didn't drop this year. <laughs> It'd be a embarrassing uh, name for the Sim if it came out in 2025. But yeah, I mean, I'm just guessing it'll come out towards the end of the year. Flight, Flight Sim 2020 came out in August, I believe, like the end of August in 2020. So I wouldn't be surprised if this one came out at a similar time toward the end of the year. But yeah, as far as I know, they haven't hint even hinted at when when this year it might come. End of 2024? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. November. As long as it comes this year, I'll be happy. Yes, I'm a coach. Uh, radio check, all right three miles ahead is leb k aerodromo del yarde That's right in front of us. I think flyers on the ground there. I'm just going to fly over to check it out. It's only a 700 foot runway. Yeah, here it is. Oh, it's paved. We're going to get over these mountains to the east though and then land at, um, keep forgetting the name, Fuente Ventura. Here's the, Here's Lebk. <laughs> what? It's got two runways? <laughs> that is very silly looking. <laughs> the numbers are almost like touching each other. They're so close together and so small. <laughs> Good thing it looks pretty flat around there. You could use that road. They don't even need the runways. The, the road is like 10 times longer than the runways. All right, we got low fuel in both tanks now. This will be fine. Yeah, it's very hazy out here. Which runways do we have here? One and one nine. We'll take a short break here, refuel. What should you upgrade if it takes so long? I mean, my sim takes forever to load as well. I think it takes like five minutes. It just depends on how much stuff you have installed. Like that's a big factor. I have a lot of the world updates installed and just like tons of planes. So I think the more content you have installed, the longer it's going to take to load. It just seems to take, yeah, longer and longer over time as we get more and more things installed. You know, just go have a snack while it loads. G 
GSX Pro, yeah. Flaps down. Don't land on the taxiway. All right, we're doing a full stop here. Uh, Danny, the live weather thing is part of Flow. It's in the marketplace. It's by Parallel42. Same with the map. It's got a lot of other features, like all the nameplates I have too are from Flow. It's really good. I would get the Essentials one from the marketplace. It's a nice little utility app. It gives you this big like action wheel and you can put in whatever you want. Like shortcuts to things. That is the longest displaced threshold ever. Look at this thing. I don't know why ATC just told me nobody is listening. I wasn't talking to ATC. Helpful though. All right, runway zero one. Look at that. It's led with a zero because we're not in the United States. So much better when it's, it should be zero one. Ooh, that was a little rough. That was worse than the last one by like a hundred feet per minute. All right, we still have one more island to visit. I think there's just one more. Yeah, just one more airport after this one. We're in the home stretch. Yeah, that was a crappy landing rate. All right, we just landed at Golf Charlie Fox Victor GCFV. It's in the bottom right if you can make it out. And then, yeah, we're going to GCRR as our final stop next one. So just one more airport. We're a good three and a half hours into this flight, so <laughs> we've been flying for a while. Mostly hand flying it. Ran out of fuel on touchdown. What a pro. So you survived though, right? Is that what you're saying? This is a, a gigantic airport. That is one of the longest displaced thresholds I've ever seen, I think. All right, taxi light on and fuel pumps off again. Flaps are up. It is such a long displaced threshold. I was late. Everybody's pretty much already down. Uh, look at this plane right here with no fuel taxiing. Lanzarote or Lan Lanzarote? I don't know how to pronounce it. Come from the southeast and low. Oh, you were there three times for the holidays. Nice. Yeah, we'll take a little break here and then we'll be on our way to the last island. Sorry, I'm a horrible tour guide. I don't I don't know about the islands and their their features or anything like that. It is the weather took a turn for the worse though. Our visibility is 
way down where it used to be. All right, a couple minutes here, a little pit stop. Might want to go up to your fuel and add a little bit, maybe. It's not that far from here, though. Let me taxi, uh, taxi over to where you guys are at. Can we just take off from the same runway, runway one again, or zero one, excuse me. But we'll take a we'll take a few minute break here. Everybody can park, refuel, get a quick snack. The next leg is uh looks pretty fast. It's probably like less than ten minutes, maybe about ten minutes to get to the final airport. Airport code is GCFV. Golf, Charlie, Fox, Victor. It's in the bottom right. If you can make it out. GCFV. And then we're just going to one more. GCRR. That's our final stop. Let's park next to this small plane. All right, there we go. All right, couple minute break here. I'll see you guys in, I don't know, two minutes or so. Alright, I'm back. Picture time, yeah. The weather is so bad here, though. 
have to uh, clean it up. Have to use some custom weather to make it look good. I'm gonna shut this down and then back on and see if it fixes the engine control unit problems. Just gonna do the quick start and see what it gives me. <laughs> what is it doing? <laughs> yeah, left and right ECU fail. And there's no EFB or anything in this, I don't think. Let me turn the ECU bus off completely. Yeah, which is going to kill the engine. That makes sense. Oh, no, it didn't actually kill the engine, but the engine load is low. It's probably just uh, not reading the right. It's not able to tell us what the RPMs and the load are. Oh yeah, it's interesting. This doesn't even have uh, electric fuel pump switches on it. I was hitting my fuel pump earlier and wondering why I wasn't hearing switches turn on, but yeah, this is the TDI version. But there, I think there are two electric fuel pump switches over here in the, uh, the 6 variant or whatever it is, the VI variant. How much was this plane? Uh, let me take a look. I got it from Orbex. I don't think it's on the marketplace yet. Yeah, it's through Orbex. It is $30 US dollars, 46 Australian, 28 euros, 24 pounds, or 30 US dollars. The cow is DA42. It's a, it's a great uh, replacement for like the DA62. If you want something a bit more custom and you know, it's got all the working circuit breakers and everything. I don't think it has like wear and tear and stuff, but yeah, this is a, it's a really nice improvement on the DA62. And it comes with two different models, like two different engine variants. One's a little faster than the other one. I wish it had more liveries though. I think it only has like five or six liveries in the, maybe like seven or seven total between the two models, something like that. All right, I'm gonna go back to taxi to runway one. Actually, <laughs> where is the taxi? Uh, where do we taxi on this? Because the displaced threshold is like a mile away. That'll take a while to taxi down. There's there's so much runway in front of us. I guess it makes sense. Let's at least go to the numbers. We don't have to do the whole whole length. We'll see where the uh, see where the taxiway entrance actually is. I kind of want to fly the Comanche. Yeah, I don't see a turn off. Here's the... Uh, I don't know which markers those are. I don't think it's the thousand foot markers. Oh yeah before yeah those are a thousand foot markers right there so there's the there are the numbers i don't really want to go all the way down there <laughs> all right whatever let's do it we'll just do a high speed taxi we can get down there faster maybe not legally but faster embraer 110 i have not looked at that one yet Uh, when's the next one? I'm probably going to fly again tomorrow on stream because I won't be around on Tuesday for the normal stream time. So I'll probably try to get in a stream tomorrow. 
and just do some IFR stuff. Maybe a little IFR in the Comanche. It'll be either in the Comanche or the, the classic uh, M500. Sounds like an 80s soundtrack. Nobody's listening on 125 decimal 55. Keeps telling me nobody's listening. Is that the DHC4 right here? It must be. Those wings. Nothing else looks like that. Alright. Thousand foot displaced threshold here. We can use this for takeoff because it's got the white arrows. Just not for landing. Alright, we just got one more airport to go to. There's another... There's a waypoint or two along the way. And then... GCRR. Runways 1, 9 -er and zero, 01. It looks like there's also a... Oh, no. It, it says 3 and 2, 1 here. There must be a couple. No, it just says 1, 9 and 0. Oh, it's running... It's it's not... Um, that's weird. That didn't work. You can highlight it and hit enter, but it doesn't take you to the correct page. Romeo, Romeo. There we go. All right, there we go. Yeah, zero, three, and two, one. Okay, so that's that matches. And then our turnoff is gonna be the left, seventy-eight hundred foot runway. All right, parking brakes off, landing lights on. Let's go. Oh, I didn't check my trim actually. There we go. Just doing it on the roll. That's uh, that's totally fine. Does anybody see me on the runway? If you have all players on and you're on USA West, then we should see you. You should also see everybody else. All right, gear up. All right, hopefully this uh, the weather gets a little better as we get away from this area. Looks pretty crappy right now. All right, ninety percent power. Man, this was a long route. No wonder it uh, recommended a TBM. It gets better. Nice. Yeah, we're at uh, we're at three hours and forty minutes on the stream so far. This is one of the longer, one of the longer ones we've done. I just don't want to go so fast that I don't appreciate any of the scenery along the way, so I tend to fly something that's slower on these crew flights, like something under 200 knots. It did recommend a TBM. What's up, Pop-Tart? Half the speed? Are you on sim rate? Did you decrease the sim rate to slow motion? Are you just flying something really slow? Most of us are in twins right now. Yeah, there's some TBMs, Grand Caravans, M500s. 
A bunch of twins, though. We got a bunch of diamonds out here. A bunch of DA62s, DA42s, Chancellors. 1X, 140 knots. Yeah, I'm at 140 knots right now. Engine is so loud. Yeah, I think that suggestion suggestion that somebody's made or whatever it was on the forums or something to have a separate um, inside and outside the cockpit volume would be great because I would turn the outside one down to like 10% or something. Just so loud. That would be nice. Oh, what's better, the 414 or the DA42? Uh, I haven't flown either one of them that much. We were flying, the Fly Simware makes the 414 though, and I was flying the Technum, so I feel like it's more fe full featured than the DA42. I almost feel like the, like the DA42 is really nice, but I feel like it's almost like a DA62 the improvement mod kind of thing, you know? I don't think there's anything like game changing about flying this plane. That the DA62 with the improvement mod doesn't have, you know? We don't have an EFB. We don't have wear and tear and failures, as far as I know, so it's pretty much like a 62 with maybe a better flight model and, and functional circuit breakers. So yeah, I would I would say the 414, I, I would agree with uh, Bell, uh, Beldelin. I haven't flown it too much, but I'm pretty sure like the 414, if it's anything like the Technum ones, doesn't it have an EFB? and some sort of failures and stuff like that. It's probably more, I, th I would guess it's more full featured like the Technum ones were. I mean, the 42 isn't a bad plane. It's, it's really nice. It just doesn't have those extra features. Very different planes. The Chancellor has also been out for a long time, and I think that it's one of those planes I've seen people consistently flying since it came out. So it must be good enough to hold people's attention for like several years, and it's still the plane that they're choosing. DA62 still, yeah. DA62, I know, I didn't try it very much, but I, I'm pretty sure it has one of those, um, has a DA62 improvement mod on flightsim.to that I, I see people mention pretty often. Black square planes, yeah. Yeah, I, I just, I'm always, like lately I'm just always recommending FS Reborn planes, Black Square planes, or like the Phoenix. They're just, you're just going to get the best planes if you get one of those. Like get the M500, the TBM, or any any Black Square plane, plane basically. Um, and then if you fly the airliners, it's kind of a no-brainer. You just get the Phoenix if you want if you want the best plane.
What is that like a mansion over there? What is that? Look at this. Look at all those pools. Like a mini Vegas resort kind of place. Some kind of resort with all those pools. Looks like a water park, yeah. Yeah, Blue Ninja, if you don't see anybody, then you probably didn't turn on all players from the world map. It's in the instructions um, in the video description. It's a college. I don't believe you. <laughs> Yeah, the weather got a lot better. All right, we got runways three and two, one. Looks like runway three is going to be fine. Okay, Mark, good to see you. Have a good rest of your day. Have a good weekend. I'll be on tomorrow if you're around tomorrow, Mark. I'll, there's a high chance that I'll be streaming again tomorrow since I'll be off. Um, off on Tuesday and then off on Saturday. So yeah, probably tomorrow and then maybe Wednesday and definitely Thursday, but I'll be gone on Saturday for a wedding. Oh, did it reset? Reset my Volanta flight plan, didn't it? There we go. Oh, I think it thinks that we uh, finished our flight or something. <laughs> Atlanta's a little weird sometimes. What's up, Keith? You can fly tomorrow. Nice. I feel bad doing the Sunday stream last week. Delta was like out of town and he couldn't make it. Maybe he'll be around tomorrow too. What time does the stream start? It's not scheduled tomorrow, so I don't know, sometime in the afternoon, probably in California, California time. Just matters how, uh, how, how late I, I don't know. It just, it's just, it's going to be kind of random, but it'll be during the day. Not like super late night or anything. Potentially around noon, the same time it started today. All right, let's get set up for runway. Was it three? Runway three is on a zero three one heading right here. Let's do our amazing OBS on the G one thousand this time. Zero three one on the track. Zero three one. All right. And that's not going to be right because we're not going direct to the airport. There we go, direct to, then OBS, 031. All right, there we go. More resorts, this looks like a resort, look at that. Look at all this stuff. This all looks like there's pools everywhere. Oh, we got the haze again. It's gonna make it'll make the landing more interesting. Just gonna leave it. Landing challenge activated. It's full of resorts. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> All right, airport elevation is 47 feet. 
And altimeter is 2997. 299 or 7. Alright, just gonna fly over the water until we get lined up with the runway. See if we can get ATC on the horn. 21 8. Put the tower up. Lanza Rote, is that it? Lanza, Lanza? Lanza Rote Tower, Diamond 6 3 Echo is 7 miles to. The southeast request full stop landing. Oh, or southwest, whoops. Alright, they'll figure it out. Visibility is not great right now. <laughs> not great, Bob. All right, they're not responding to me. 121.8, Tower, Diamond 63 Echo, six miles to the south, request full stop landing. Maybe I said the tower name so wrong that it didn't recognize it. One two zero point seven. Oh, oh yeah. There's three different tower frequencies. Oh yeah, I'll just check the, yeah, that's a good point. Let me check the app. Yeah, it's 120.7, you're right. Yeah, because they just pick one of the frequencies. Say intentions does. Might be a little too late to contact them. Lanzarote Tower. Lanzarote? Diamond 6 3 Echo, three miles to the south. Request full stop landing. I don't know how to pronounce it. Let's see, let's see how they say it. It might not be right how they say it either. Get my gear down. Diamond 6063 Echo Lanzarote Tower, make straight in for runway three. Straight in runway three, 63 Echo. All right, make straight in, but they didn't say clear to land, right? So. All right, flaps one. It's like we're gonna have like a couple of, knot, couple of knots headwind here. All right, there's our OBS needle coming in. Oh, is that it right in front of me? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so much closer than I thought I was. Whoops, chop and drop. I thought it was to the left. We are very close, whoops. <laughs> All right, let's try, three echo winds let's try slipping it here. Clear to land. <laughs> Runway three, clear to land, diamond six, three echo. Glider time. I was just staring off at the uh, dot to the left. I was like, oh, that's the runway over there. I got time. Nope. <laughs> Professional sim pilot here. All right, let me try to get a good... They said winds are calm. Try to get a good rate of descent here. I think my last one was like 230 or something. The one before that was 130. Hundred and five, yes. A little better. A little off center line though. Now, let me get over here. Get that drone camera out. Maybe I can actually catch some people landing. We're too tightly knit of a group. Sometimes it's hard. Skyhawk 542 Alpha X-ray. Yes, there we go. Call your crosswind. Gray Wolf PA24. Skyhawk 542 Alpha X-ray. 
Is that one of the tr is that one of the arrows? Corrupt in the DA62. Oh no, he's glitching badly. He's going for multiple landings. <laughs> he's padding his logbook. He's hacking. Mystics down in the uh, M500. All right, Avison DA62. Look at that glider. Beldelin's down in the Bonanza. Oh, almost. I think he's going for multiple landings as well. I don't land smoothly, just letting you know. Oh, me neither. And that one was decent. I don't know if I see you though, Ninja. Loki's down in the... Is that the 62? Cyber MU2 looking beautiful. Oh, it looked like a like a missile for a second before it loaded in. <laughs> Down on the numbers, touching the center line, which is um, kind of forbidden. Touching the center line's overachievement. Ryan coming down in the Bonanza. Oh, underdog in the ATR. Oh, look at this. He's going for the slow lane landing. Little bit of a crab there. Lights set to fully blind mode. Smoke's coming down, DA62. Yeah, there's the PA PA24 is one of the arrows, isn't it? I haven't flowed them for a bit. I think that's the arrow. Assume it's the arrows. Oh, uh, the DHC4. Raptor's on the way. Dude, that thing looks so... Look at the wing shape on it. That one was actually really fun to fly. It took me forever to get it started manually. But it was really fun to fly, that one. What a... It's just such a strange shape. Of <laughs> Margie. <laughs> All right, FX is coming in in the 310R. Need to work on landing with the stick? Yeah, me too. <laughs> Always need to work on the landings. Lake Pilot and the Kodiak. Oh, Kodiak with floats. Beautiful. The Milviz or the Blackbird 310R. FX is down. 310R is awesome too. Too many good planes. Lake Pilot with the floats and the Kodiak. In the fast lane. My preferred, my preferred, uh, <laughs> Gray Wolf just bouncing around. Jack's coming in the 42, another cow about to touch down. <laughs> Nordic 576 negative, continue taxi to parking. I think that's everybody. I don't see anybody else. Dude, the ATR looks great. There's just too many, too many good planes. I say it every, I say, I say it like every 30 minutes on the stream. There are too many good planes to pick from. All right, let me finish my taxi here. Flaps up. Oh, the new velocity flight yoke, yeah. Are you using the triggers for your um, rudders there, Pop Tart? Hey, Taylan, what's up? Sorry to say, we just got to our final destination. What is going on? <laughs> is that a helicopter? Yeah, you are using the rudder, the the triggers. Yeah. 
The yoke is sticky? TMI. All right, we're having an airplane convention. <laughs> All right, let me get this thing shut down. Bonanza 9001 Bravo, clear Engines off. off Wake turbulence Electric off master off. Avionics off. Clear 45 clear minutes. That's just from the Bonanza last airport, I guess. Bravo. All right, how are these turning on again? What's going on? Oh, my switch is on. That's why. There we go. I did set some more switches. It actually feels good to have more switches for lights and stuff. I have one for battery master. I have one for taxi and landing, one for strobe, one for nav lights. It works pretty good in most planes too. 42 planes nearby. <laughs> that was a crazy turnout. Well done, everyone. We're bringing down the uh, multiplayer servers, probably. Time to um, turn it off live weather so screenshots look good. There we go. Look how much better the lighting looks. Kodiak is so pretty. Who's in the Kodiak? Oh, Lake Pilot is. I gotta turn off the points of interest. I wish you could, um, it'd be really cool if they made it so whenever you took a screenshot, it would, it had a, its own custom screenshot button. So whenever you hit it, you could tell it to like automatically hide points of interest and stuff like that. So you don't have to like always go into here and, you know, turn them off. Oh, whoops, that was the wrong, wrong one here. Beautiful. I think the scenery around that like third island, I forget the name of it, was was the best, but kind of awesome. All the all the cities along the ocean, like everything along the coast here, everything looked really good as far as detail goes. I feel like this, yeah. This area has really good uh, elevation data or something. Get that ATC turned off finally. I feel like maybe they using the ATC is uh, maybe it's a bit much sometimes for flights like this. Oh, Grand uh, Grand Canaria. Yeah, that's the one. That one was awesome. The one that's like just circular island. Looked really good. There's probably I wonder if there's like some uh, custom custom scenery for airports. Like the airports like pretty basic most of the time. Oh look, hey, there's another pool here. There's literally, a, there's like a pool at the airport. And it's just like the pool islands with like the most pools per capita probably. Someone flew a watercraft. Yeah, Lake Pilot changed. I forget what Lake Pilot was in first. I think he was in the, um, uh, the Bronco for a bit and then switched over to the Kodiak. Good stuff. Let me see if I can get the uh, get the camera on somebody for the end here. Watch people fly around. Um, yeah, why isn't it? Oh, there we go. I wish um, I wish Flow Pro had like a, a list of players, and you could just click one, and it would just target them. Are you supposed to be able to like press and hold T and choose somebody? I don't know. I talk about that every time too. Someday I'll figure it out. All right, guys, great flight, man. That was four hours. That was definitely one of the longer flights we've done on the group streams, the group flight streams. So thanks for sticking with it. Uh, Galixian, thanks for the 10 gifted earlier. Really appreciate that. And the $2 super chat. I have to translate your name every time because I forget. I feel, I feel bad. Translate. Oh, Kazuya, Kazuya, that's it. 
Thanks for the $2 super chat earlier if you're still here. Oh, the court's over. Nice, Loki. More time to fly now. A ca murder case from 2016. The guy went on trial. Man, that is crazy. After the arrest in 2022? Damn. Well, that's cool that it's over, man. That can be stressful. I've, I've never made it like onto the uh, onto an actual jury before, but sounds like a lot of work. Glad it's over and uh, you can relax now. Now you don't have to uh, be on jury duty for like, what, 20 years? That's the law, right? Something like that. All right, guys, thanks for flying along. I'll see you guys. Um, oh, yeah, the mayday was ridiculous. Yeah, over the water, worst possible time. Oh, you get a one year break. Yeah, yeah, it's not enough. Should be way longer. All right, guys, I'll probably be on tomorrow since I'll be off on Tuesday for some work stuff. So I won't be able to make Tuesday or Saturday, but I'll try to be on tomorrow uh, around the same time. And then I'll try to do the same thing. Um, I'll, I'll be on on Thursday for the marketplace stream. So we won't miss it this week like we did or next week like we did this week. But um, yeah, GG. Good flying with you guys as always. I'll put the Discord link in the chat if you guys want to join up. And uh, I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the memberships. Thanks for the donations. The super chats. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't show a helicopter. It's like every time that happens. Try White Castle later. Nice. Oh, Michael's saying anybody want to do Caribbean island hopping on Discord. Yeah, if you guys are interested in flying more, you want to want to group up. Please, yeah, feel free to use the Discord. If, if we need more voice channels, we can add them later, but there's the group flight channel in there you guys can use. This targeting system, man, could be so good. I want an automatic camera thing where when you like choose someone, it'll like track them and auto zoom and change angles like a cinematic camera. That'd be really cool. All right, dudes, have a good rest of your Saturday. I will probably see you all tomorrow. I'll see you in the Discord. Thanks for hanging out as always. Have a good one. See ya.